What is going on, family? How is everybody doing? Listen, I hope I hope that we don't have to take a long time today. Let me know if everybody can hear people. I had problems with the left and the right ear event. I had issues. So make sure you fix that. <laughs> I did the best I could too. So here we are. And now we are here, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, we're not, I'm not gonna, I just wanna. I want to make sure because I know maybe a few of you have not been here before or whatever, because I heard some people talking and some of the people who were talking last week had a little bit to think of the shade. So listen, I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure before we got started good that I address why I'm doing this. For those of you who do not know, I have been in this space talking about black celebrity in the sense of bla what black celebrity does and how it impedes politics for a very long time. So you can go back six, seven years and find those kinds of videos. So please understand that this is not new. This is a political, this is a political podcast for those of you who are who may be confused because we're talking about celebrity. Now, I want to go ahead and I want to say one other thing. Just to give people a quick backdrop about how these things interwork together, because I know this may be new to some folks, so I just want to give everybody some kind of something, right? I want to give everybody something um, that kind of helps everybody to understand the, the impact before we talk about the people to understand the impact of social engineering. I'm not going to get deep into it, right? Uh, I, 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 I am not going to do that. But when America's hottest jazz stars were sent to cool, to cool Cold War tensions, one of the things that happened is that America had a bad reputation for a lot of good reasons in terms of racism. And so the idea was started. The post-war years saw the entrenchment of the Cold War, a direct standoff between the U.S. and the Soviet Union on the one hand, an indirect battle to win the allegiances of nations across the globe on the other. Propaganda was used to sell the competing ideologies of communism and democracy and to undercut the claims of the other side, as the informa U.S. Information Agency director Theodore Stryber proudly announced in a promotional film in 1954. Now, now, what did this what does this mean ladies and gentlemen what does it mean that that happened well here's what it means here's what it means I want to be very 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 clear about what it means it means that America had a problem and America's problem was that it was saying that we are the best country and we can defeat communism and we can defeat all that other stuff but the problem was America had the problem of racism so before I get into the article just understand that what America did with the help of and I with the idea of a, a, a black congressman decided that the way we're going to help improve America in terms of how America faces to the world is we're going to send out some jazz artists. We're going to send out some of our best. We're going to send them out and we're going to change the image of America. This was Adam Clayton Powell, um, who was the head of this effort, right? He looks Italian, but he wasn't. Go look him up. He wasn't. You can't just be going by that. You see, you can't just be going by that. You might end up being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it still has a problem, but it, but that time they decided that I think America don't care about that problem no more. I think America has moved past it. But I just wanted to say, I wanted to point that out because our icons were used to soften the view of what racism was in America. Our icons and our jazz greats were used by America, social engineering to make it look as if America was not as bad as America was. In 1954, President Eisenhower wrangled five million from Congress to send U.S. cultural groups abroad as part of the growing public diplomacy effort. Initially, they sent uh, they sent symphony orchestras, theater groups, a cappella singers, and folk dancers. The Soviets responded by touring national institutions such as uh, Kiev and Bolshev troops. Uh, though, though the country's political claims were undermined when star performers like Nora Novich and Roy, blah, 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 blah. the point of the matter is, America has always used entertainers 
as a way to kind of influence us and influence what we think about things. America has always done that. So when I talk about entertainers, understand that I'm talking about entertainers through the lens of politics in a way that that, that political people have always and politicians have always distorted it. So what I talked about last time we got here, we gathered here, gathered around cheering, Right. The last thing I talked about when we gathered here was how this is social engineering to make us believe we have money we do not have, that we have things we do not have. When I talked about Monique, when I talked about Cat Williams, when I talked about Kevin Hart, when I talked about Kevin Hart's white manager. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Joe Button's white manager. We're going to have a conversation about the things you are led to believe and the things your entertainers do not know. And I listen, I watch all of these people. People don't know how much I kind of lurk around the Internet because part of the way I talk to you is being influenced by what all of the people are consuming. And if I don't know what you're consuming, then I can't talk to you. So I always try to figure out what my people are listening to and who they are listening to to get a sense of how they're being informed or misinformed. Okay? So just want to give the back the, the kind of backdrop for that. Everybody hearing okay, we all right too loud and what let me know. But I just wanted to make sure everybody understands or at least has a basic understanding at some point, you know, hopefully doing a YouTube show, if not a Patreon show, we will really break down social engineering. But that will not be today. And since it's not today, we won't deal with it today. Right. So I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that it seemed like that was a little miscommunication last time in terms of well, what are we doing? And I don't understand who she is and why she says this. Well, this is why. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. Now, for those of you who are asking, no, I'm not really going to deal with D.L. Hughley. <laughs> <laughs> and here's why. Here's why. I'm going to give you a very good reason why I'm not going to thank you, A-Gear, but I sure do appreciate you. I'm not going to deal with him much because the problem is he's going to have to wipe off his camera lens. I'm not dealing with that. Listen, I have I have had some of the worst camera and some of the worst audio stuff, but I will not talk to somebody. I refuse to talk to somebody who wants me to talk to them through that camera lens. I absolutely refuse. I'm not going to do it. And I will tell you that my problem with DL goes far beyond his refusal to wipe wipe the sweat off his camera lens. It's bigger than that for me. DL, just like Smiley, Ricky Smiley, get their talking points from the Democratic Party. Now, I'm not saying that the Democratic Party is awful. I'm not saying that, well, I kind of am, but <laughs> this is not, that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying that there are not instances locally, especially, where that's who you vote for. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, and what I want to be clear about is that I don't have a lot of respect for people who take their talking points from the Democratic Party and bring them to us in mass. I have always said, ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing new, that we have to be an agenda-led people. We have to have our own ADOS agenda, and then we have to have a black agenda that we take to politicians. We do not feed, we do not feed our people what politicians tell us. It's the other way around. And I feel like people like D.L. Hughley do that. So my issue with him is a lot different than the issue that other people have with him. My issue with him is 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 mostly political. Although I think, geez, I just I just think everything when it goes back to him and Monique, it was rough. That was that was rough to go back and forth and the kids and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's another reason why you, if you don't want that stuff to come out, you don't bring it out. I heard him say, well, Monique brought my kids, brought my kids into this. Well, here's the thing. I think she said, I probably shouldn't have said that, but you said that eight years ago on Sway's show. If I don't bring my life up here, because if you bring it up, that means you dug stuff up on me. It doesn't mean that I put it out there for you. I didn't put somebody's moment out there for you. That's my problem with him. Right. We have people who have always been trying to make a bag or make a name for themselves by being the best black Democrat in the room. And I have a political problem with DL that has absolutely nothing to do with this fight. He doesn't know enough to have the kind of political conversations that he has. And like most people, that has never stopped him. So it, it is not a you know, it is not a it is not a huge a huge thing, but it's you are a person who is talking about politics who doesn't know enough to have the conversation, and most people aren't willing, and our people suffer because of it because you have a bigger microphone than most. So our people go through a lot because of what you do not know and because of what you're unwilling to learn. And, and if we're going to talk about cancellations and things like that, your show got canceled. So if we're going to have that conversation, let's bring the whole body of work into the thing, can we? 
I mean, can we have a conversation, a real conversation about the problem with black celebrity? I'm waiting for it. I'm ready for it. But let's 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 just keep going, shall we? So we had Shannon Sharp and we had we had, a, you know, this story. Let me tell you, fam, the thing about this story that was so crazy is that the story just wouldn't stop. <laughs> Listen, I had anticipated coming in here talking about something totally different. But then I look at the news cycle and we still going. I look at the news cycle and we're still having the conversation. I look at the news cycle and people are still chiming in, but in a very specific way. Understand that people circle the wagons in a way I don't think I've ever seen before in terms of individuals. So people started, listen, they didn't have enough time to react as much as they should have. They did with Cat Williams, right? They didn't have enough time, but they did react and they reacted to Monique. And I don't think Shannon Sharp understands the reaction. So what, what am I talking about? Well, let me just go here for one second. Let me just go here for one second. So I heard Shannon Sharp talking to Ocho Cinco, the Ocho Cinco child. And they was wrong for saying you ain't got no eyebrows. That, that stuff is low. You got some stuff there above your eye. Don't let them talk to you like that. But I was watching him, and he said something that bothered me. He said, you know, you know, the thing that happens he said, Ocho, is every time a black person ascends, he said, every time a black person ascends, there are a lot of people who want to just throw, basically throw dirt on your name because you are ascending. And I want to say, Shannon, I hope you're listening. That's not what happened. I want you to understand clearly what happened. I have some differences. Uh, I may have some differences with Shannon in terms of branding and brand deals and stuff like that, but that's not the moment for that. I like to pick my moments. For me, that's not the moment for that. Let me tell you something, Shannon. I used to like football, CTE, and it just started taking too much of my time, right? It started taking too much of my time, but Shannon, I used to like it. And, and I remember, I'm old enough to remember when you actually played the game. Now, I will tell you that people loved you. So people, black people were not hating on you and have not been hating on you because you ascend. People have always loved you, Shannon. Even when you sat across from Skip, people loved you. There's a reason why they call you Unk. Even as you were ascending, people loved you. Stay with me, Shannon. Even as you were making your way up, people always rooted for you, and they loved you. Now, the question becomes, what's wrong? The question becomes, what's wrong now? Why the people that loved you all them years don't love you now? Because you were successful then, and we loved you. You came from poverty, Adolf's life, loved you. So what happened? What happened? And the thing that happened started with that Cat Williams interview. What happened, Shannon? And I will tell you exactly what's happened. The problem is there are a lot of little cliques that exist to sell Adolf's story and to make money from white capital. That's how they exist. now. They have been able to tell a bunch of lies and a bunch of story about a whole bunch of people. It's not just about Kat and Monique. Take them out of that. They've been telling a whole bunch of lies about how America works and how you have to build wealth and you can do it to it, making us feel bad about ourselves. And they run in clicks. They run in like packs of little wolves and stuff. That's the problem. They have a house built on lies. The people who are mad at you right now, calling you gay and all that stuff, they have a house built on lies. They have a mansion built on lies. What do you think happens, Shannon, when you come in there and you let people start telling their truth? Let me tell you, if I have a house built on lies and somebody comes in there and starts telling the truth, I have a problem. And that's why they have a problem with you. It has nothing to do with your success. It has to do with the fact that your success threatens their success. And they coming, and they're not going to stop coming. They are going to keep coming for you because you have allowed people to air out their grievances in a way that is honest and makes sense, and you don't interrupt them, and you don't make them feel bad. You don't make them feel diminished. You don't tell them that the problem is they don't know how to negotiate. You just give them an ear. You just let them air out stuff. And so people who come in and say, well, he's messy. Messy how? He's just letting people tell their story. You told your story on his couch or you told your story over here. Why they can't come on the sofa and tell their story? Why are you threatened by their story? See, Shannon, the problem is the truth. The problem that they have with you is that you don't have a problem with the truth. The problem that they have with you is that you don't run in that clique. The problem that they have with you is you that you your own person. So the jokes they got to come make is, oh, he gay. Let me tell you something. 
I ain't never seen so many allegedly heterosexual men go around talking about booty, 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 busty, busty. Like, what is that in the, in the world? Even if he was and he says he's not, I'm saying that. But what in the world is wrong? What is this obsession that y'all have? Even if he was, what does that got to do with you and the interview? Well, because that's how you get people to turn off. That's how you get people to turn off. Let me tell you something. You can go back. You can go back. You can go back all the way spiritually. You can go back to the Bible. And Pontius Pilate said, hey, y'all sure y'all want to kill Jesus? And somebody said this on the show one day. He turned to the elves and said, y'all sure y'all want to kill him? Even I feel funny about this. And they said, yeah, we want him. Truth tellers have always had a bad way. If you were just winning if you were still just winning and saying black excellence and I can do it, you can do it, and you were not giving people a, 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 a space to tell their truth, nobody would have a problem with you. Nobody would have a problem with you. So you have to, you have to understand that. That's the first thing that you have to understand. Now, I want to go to something else really quickly because, and, and, and we can come back to that at some kind of point. But I want to I I make sure everybody, I just want to make sure everybody understands that's why everybody's going at Shannon right now. All of that sexuality stuff that they're saying about him. You never, you, 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 you heard some little stuff on the blogs because of his stylist, but you never heard as much as you hear now. You got a whole grown man, where he at? You got a whole grown man in his bed doing a video like he's, let me tell you, too many of these comedians are allowed to be what I call second childhood Negroes. You all are living your second childhood. That's not even the right pose for a Negro who's 53 years old doing a video. And you're going to say, yeah, I'm just trying to, he's just trying to get, let me tell you. He's just trying to, he's just trying to get on your show, Shannon. Why are you mad at him? He already told you, I'm just, I'm just mad I wasn't mentioned. I'm just trying to get in there. These are second second generation childhood. This is they on their second childhood. They might have a third. That is what he's doing. You can't be mad at somebody, Shannon, that wants your shine. You cannot be mad at that. This Negro ain't grown. He got gray hair with the phone on his stomach. At, at What are you doing? And then he, let me tell you, the problem, the problem is morality. The problem with a lot of people who get kicked out of these spaces, these black excellent, black Hollywood spaces, part of the reason a lot of these people get kicked out of these spaces and they don't want to be because they, they, don't, they don't believe in morality. So he says uh, on, on his own, on, he says, well, uh, uh, Shannon asked me to be on the show and, I, and, I, and he asked me, wait a minute. Then Shannon Sharp says, I have the DMs. You asked me to be on the show. I didn't ask you. And he said, yeah, well, uh, uh, I asked you to be on the show because my name came up. Well, then say that, you lying Negro. Don't say, don't say, don't say he asked me. Don't lie. See, a lot of people lie because they know or they think in this black Hollywood space, they know or they think the lie ain't going to be picked up on. Or because I lied, you're going to have me on the show. That's who these people are. So if you are moral, we think it's just white Hollywood making people put on a dress. That's part of it. But there's another part of it that is these people are immoral, too. So if you are a moral person who believes in telling the truth and doing the right thing in this space of Negroes, you are going to have a problem. <laughs> these are second generation children. This is their, they're on their second childhood. So if you are an adult around these people, listen, Mike Epps don't even tell jokes on stage. Y'all seen his stuff on stage? He don't tell jokes. He just get on stage and have a conversation because he, it's, it's low expectations. He get on stage and have a conversation. Well, I tell you, you know another thing I saw? I saw a lady with a wooden leg. Why y'all ever seen her with a wooden leg? And then he bump his microphone. That's not comedy. But, and that's why they make these jokes. A lot of these people making these jokes haven't done a new set, a new comedy set in 20 years. They're still telling the same joke they told 10 years ago. So, yes, I'm going well, to talk about how he came. That's it. Shannon, that's it. But let's go back up for a second because, you know, last, last, last show, I mentioned something. And, you know, I want to I want to I want to get back to it. Because last show, I mentioned something. I mentioned Kevin Hart's manager. And I said, Kevin Hart's manager, for those of you all who remember, I said, Kevin Hart's manager called Monique and said, we don't want nothing to do with Monique, right? And I said, I don't know whether, listen, I said, first of all, if that's what Kevin Hart did, if he said, no, 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 we're going to work together, we're going to do it, we're going to, hey, 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 don't worry about it, we're going to work together. And if he didn't do it, hold on, let me take this man's face with his phone on his belly off my thing. It's, 
is really getting on my nerves. I said, if he didn't do that, that makes him immoral. That makes him like he should have done that, right? But then I said, then I think about it, and I say, wait a minute. Maybe the problem, maybe he didn't even make the call. Maybe the manager made the call because y'all all have these little handlers. And I think part of the problem with Monique and Monique's husband is that people get upset because Monique's husband puts up a boundary that's there that means you can't get to her and that a manager, a white manager, can't eat off her and just tell her what to do and make calls on her behalf. Because why are we in entertainment? And I said this last time, but we don't own entertainment. If there's one thing we do, we entertain, but we cannot own entertainment because there's always a manager somewhere. You can talk all that black excellence stuff you want to, but everybody got a manager that talks to a record exec who talks to somebody else who talks to a lawyer that don't look like us. So tell me about how we got there. Because that's the manager. So I'm just going to listen. I'm not I'm not hating on nobody, but I just want to talk about managers for a second. So because I, I, I saw the Joe Button part. This is Joe Button's manager, Ian Schwartzman. So if we're going to have a conversation, if everybody want to talk about managers and tell the truth and shame the devil. Nobody ever talked about that conversation Ian Schwartzman had. Because let me go back. Let me, let me go back for a second. That's his manager, but let me go back to the show. So I'm talking about everybody who had a take on this because everybody, I feel like everybody is trying to manipulate the conversation. So let me just make sure. Let me just make sure that we understand. So if you listen to Joe Budden, Joe Budden said, you know, everybody lies. That's just... That's just, you know, that's just, and I'm going to come back to that Ian fellow. He says everybody lies. That's just how it is in Hollywood. So, so if, 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 if Kevin Hart told, told Monique that, she shouldn't have went back and told her production company. That's why we hate y'all. That's why y'all are, don't tell me about black excellence because that's what y'all do. Y'all ain't no different than the white folk. You lie and move on. But let me just keep going for a second. That's not a moral thing to do. It's not moral to do that. But let me say something else. Let's, let's, let, me show you, let me show you why this is a, a, a stupid take. This is a stupid take because it is. Kevin Hart had loaned Monique and her husband money. If you loan me money, this is not just some Hollywood stuff. I, you a real friend. If you loan me money, my assumption is, if you loan me a nice chunk of change to make my way through, my assumption is, and it's a legitimate assumption, is that you good people. So if you good people, then I can make another assumption that if you said we're going to work together, we're going to work together. Here's another reason why Joe Budden's take was half crazy. He said, well, you still shouldn't say that. Why I shouldn't say that? Because here's the other second part of it. The, the context of the conversation, I wish half of y'all would do y'all research and listen to more than 10 minutes before you go on the show and try to pod. I mean, if that's your job and you get Balenciago and all kind of other uh, uh, clothes off that, at least take 10 minutes and respect your audience and listen to it. Because the thing that happened is it was making up for something. So Monique was talking to Kevin Hart. She wanted Tyler Perry to make it right and, and do what he needed to do. And, and Kevin Hart said, yeah, yeah, I understand, Monique, everything you're saying, but I'm going to make it right. Me and you going to work together, meaning you ain't going to have to go through Tyler Perry because me and you going to make it right. We going to work together. So it wasn't just some Hollywood stuff that we dap each other up like y'all do, you, you weirdo narcissists. That's not what we're talking about. It was... Um, because Kevin Hart said himself, this is my mother, this is my sister, this is my auntie. So I'm taking it off. Okay, you talk to Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry said he don't want to revisit it. But listen, Mo, me and you going to make it right. Me and you going to do this. That sounds like a brother to sister conversation. A man who loaned me money, he talked to Tyler Perry on my behalf, and he said, we're going to work together. Of course I let my studio know. How does that person who took a person on his word who had been good to her, how does that person come out to be the bad guy? Only among selfish people who want what's best for themselves or who just didn't pay attention to the conversation. I'm telling you that Hollywood, including, right, Curtis, I'm not, Curtis Keller, listen, I'm not saying Monique don't have agency. When did I say that? Tell me when I say that. Put it in the chat where I said she doesn't have agency. I'm saying what makes sense in a conversation. It makes sense in a conversation if Kevin Hart has been good people to me. He has been decent to me. He knows what I'm going through. We did a podcast together. I told him all the stuff. And he said, I'm going to make it right. 
It makes sense in the context of that conversation. The context of that conversation, it then makes sense to say, okay, let's, let's get the people, let's get it going. No, you got to be clear. Use your words, Curtis. You, you speaking as she does. No, you got to say, you got you to gotta be clearer with your words. I'm not going to rush you. I'm on live. But you can be clearer with your words and you speaking as she does. Use your words. Pick up a thesaurus and let's get busy. Please. Because this makes sense. You don't get to be the bad guy off of that conversation. Right? And, like, if y'all got to stop talking all this brother-sister stuff. Y'all got to stop talking all these, these, no, I'm saying that you have agency amongst each other. I'm not saying that you get to run up and take over white Hollywood. I'm saying in the interactions that you have with other people. So if, 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 if I'm saying that if, if Kevin Hart can put Tiffany Haddish on, he could make the request for Monique. Now, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. He gets to come back and say, Hey, the, the, um, the, 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 the big, the big movie house said, nah, they said they don't want to do it. I pushed for you. I brought you in to, 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 to the thing, to, to do it, and you, you heard what the man said. But, man, I'm going to keep looking out. You don't have, and that is a problem. That is a problem that you don't have agency in industries that you run. Now, let me get back to Joe Bunn's manager because all this stuff is just very annoying to me. So if you get back to Ian, and I'm not going to spend here long. And I want everybody to understand Ian Schwartzman, he's a, he's a Jewish fellow. And there was, a pro, there was a podcast where they started kind of trying to talk about why they couldn't talk about um, what was happening in Gaza. And they started talking about it. And oh, I forget the child, the man's name. The thin one uh, starts with a K. He came in and said we were, we were, we were kidnapped. We weren't kidnapped. Um, Kinu, what's his name? We were not kidnapped. We were sold. And, well, we, we don't know who we are. We can't trace. None of that stuff matters. We're American. None of that stuff matters. But there's a part that's really problematic for me and that we don't talk about when you talk about informing our politics and informing what we do and how we move. So he starts to say, basically, we, we're, we're a lot alike. We have a lot in common. And I think oh, people who have been oppressed everywhere have things in common, right? But there was a push for sameness. There was a push to say that I can't trace my lineage either. And nobody pushes back enough. And what do I say when I say they don't push back enough? What do I say when everybody on that pod, let me tell you, everybody on that podcast, I don't know everybody's background. I know one of them's, one of them's half Haitian, Jamaican, one of them's Puerto Rican, Queens flip. You should have said something with your crazy. Like, I don't know everybody's background. But what I do know is that everybody in that room is black. And everybody, quote, unquote, I don't know who's Ados and who's not. Everybody in the room is black. And this is a white man saying we're the same. Or we have, we have more in common than we have not. And nobody in the room said you're white. And nobody said the thing is that you're right and you're able to come here and be a part of an industry um, that you may or may not. And manage for people who are rappers or hip-hop artists, regardless of whether you grew up in that industry, that makes us very different. Nobody in that room said, and this is part of my problem with managers, and the things people say versus what they do. Nobody said that part of what makes us different, Ian, is that your country has been paying, ha, ha, is, uh, Germany will pay more than $1.4 billion next year to survivors, of, survivors of Nazi atrocities. Nobody will say to him that your people got reparations and our people did not. Nobody wants to tell their white manager the truth. So if you can't tell your white manager the truth or you don't know the truth, you don't know enough of the truth to say the truth, then what power do you have? See, what happens is a lot of y'all have powers over other Negroes, but in the real room, you don't have power. And maybe that goes to your point, Curtis, because maybe when you get into that real room, you don't have power. But don't pretend to me. Don't down me when you get in that other room. You can't tell him. And this is the truth. Listen, the Jewish community and the, 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 the ADOS community had a, during the civil rights movement, we did good stuff together. There were some very supportive people. So I'm not saying that Jewish people have not shown out and supported us in ways that mattered. Right. They helped BLM to their detriment. I'm not saying that that hasn't happened. But do not come to me. And in any kind of way, liken me to you, because I cannot go in another industry and say, yep, I want to set up shop here. Half of y'all can't even go into the hip hop industry, in the music industry and say, I want to be a manager because Ian is already there. But he want to tell you that y'all the same. Right. 
Germany marks 70 years of compensating Holocaust survivors. You want to know the difference between me and you, Ian? Is, is that my people, were, my, my people were sharecroppers and didn't have nothing? Your people have been getting reparations for 70 years. Nobody in that room says that that makes us different. When you walk into a room, you walk into a room as a white man, and your people have wealth and my people don't. Nobody wants to say that. Listen, I can't, I can't view anybody as having power. First of all, if you don't have any kind of knowledge of self other than we were kidnapped, <laughs> we were just sold. It was a transaction of Africans selling other Africans. But you got to be willing to tell your manager the truth. Y'all got something that we never got. Y'all got something. You white, we, we, we're all black in this room. I don't know who's who, but we black in this room. Don't come in here talking about we the same and what we should know and what we should risk. I wouldn't even give my manager a microphone. You get the right to speak. No, you manage me, sir. You don't get the right to talk. 100-year-old ex-Nazi camp a guard is convicted in a German court. Let me tell you, rightfully so, the Jewish community, rightfully so, is still chasing down Nazis. They're still chasing down companies that use labor. They're still chasing down everything that was stolen from us. We can't even get the people in Tulsa convicted. Are you doing something, Ian, to help with that? If not, if not, don't tell me, don't sit in a room full of Negroes on a podcast and tell them what they don't know about your history. Your history was in Germany. Our history is right here. Don't you dare speak to me like that. See, that's what I say in the room, and that's why I'm not in the room. This is my room, and this is my podcast. You're going to not tell me what I need to know when you obviously don't know the history of your own people and my people, or you would know how different we are. Don't tell me about boss moves. If you can't boss your own manager, I don't want to hear about it from anybody. And this is just uh, this is just one example. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to jump on uh, Joe Budden. I think he's you know, I think he's I think he's entertaining. Right. I think he's a great producer. That's not this, though. This is not boss stuff. And you see it everywhere. I remember when Lil Roland Martin, y'all know Lil Roland Martin, he was talking about he couldn't get an interview with nobody in Hollywood, none of the black people in Hollywood because they all had white managers and they wanted they didn't want to talk. <laughs> like he's okay i've been out here for two days you know i'm rolling be i've been out here for two days i can't find nobody to want to talk to me this is atrocious you can't even tell your own manager what he don't know let me tell you new york has new york has what it was a hundred billion or something they just got and they're finna redistribute to to to, to holocaust survivors and their heirs that's New York. They just did that. So they did that, and we can't have a come, and we get in a room, and y'all can't tell this man. It's five or six of y'all, and y'all can't tell this man you're white, and y'all got reparations. And this didn't, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Talk about a rebrand. But nobody want to say that. Nobody want to tell the truth and shame the devil. But you want to go around and talk about Talk about talk about being a boss. And here's my and let me just get through all of them because like I said, I'm not gonna try to stay here too long. But this is uh this is crazy. Cause you had Stephen A. Smith say, come out. He's talking to, he just talked because it's something to talk about. He don't care. I'm gonna talk all the time to, <laughs> to all the money stop coming in. I'm gonna talk. That's what he see. He just said, I'm gonna talk. Hit the like button, fam, while you're in here. Like hitting the light on and go off. He gonna talk. Well. I, I turned it off after after three minutes. Why, Yvette? Why you didn't want to hear what he had to say? You didn't want to hear what he had to say, Yvette? You didn't like him, Yvette? No, he said, black people, we're embarrassing ourselves. At that point, I turned it off. What else I'm going to need? Let me tell you what my litmus test is. My litmus test, I said it last time, and I'm not going to stop saying this. This is my litmus test. If none of y'all said anything, when Kevin Hart said that Cat Williams was on drugs and he wasted his Hollywood career because he was on drugs and nobody said a word, I don't want to hear anything. You didn't say it that time because everybody is kissing Kevin Hart's butt because they say he's a billionaire, he's a boss. And so, and, and Joe Budden has an interesting method. Because like I said, I listen to a lot of these people. I try to lurk around where I can. He has an interesting thing that he does. He'll like say two things bad about you or one thing good or one thing bad and two things. So that if you call him, he can say, no, I said some good stuff. You know, I have to be part. It's all the part. But let me just, let me just, I'm going to just bring this up because I just wanted to bring this up right now have taken advantage of all the money that i have i've shot over 56 specials for the up-and-coming generation of comedy why because i'm trying to create opportunities so and i'm not gonna bring it all up 
because, you know, copyright, people got crazy. But in that video, he said, Kevin Hart said, it was on The Breakfast Club. You can look at it. I gave you the little shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said he chose drugs. That's what he said. He said, Cat Williams, listen, I said, and I'm not, I'm going I'm to, if you had no problem, if you had no problem, Cat Williams said he don't do hard drugs. I don't, how would I know? But if y'all had no problem, nobody had a problem with that man going on a nationally syndicated show and saying that Cat Williams was a drug addict. Don't come to me talking about we, we looking stupid. I don't want to hear nothing from Judge Mathis. Judge Mathis, I see your ads all through Georgia, and, and they all for a white law firm. So please don't talk to me, Judge Mathis, about why we can't stick together and why we always look so bad. Well, does the, does the black legal community, does the ADOS legal community stick together? Because every time I see you, every time I see you, you doing ass for you doing ass for uh 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 you know, you doing ass for a white man. I don't think Curtis gets it. It's not about whether or not we're yes, you're locked out. But the question becomes, how do you get in? And the question becomes, stop presenting yourself as in. Stop presenting yourself as a boss if you're not a boss. Like if you're not a boss and your manager and your studio, they run you. You gotta say, listen, Monique, I wish I could, but my stuff's already locked in. It's locked up. My stuff, I can't do nothing. I can't move. The problem is there's a presentation. The presentation they give you is I'm a boss. Step out my way. I'm a boss. She don't know how to do boss move. And I got this. I got to be a boss by just hard work. No, you got to be a boss by boot licking. You got to be a boss because of the Negroes you refuse to talk to. You got to be a boss because you tell those lies. Let's talk to how you, how you worked your way to the money. Hard work is always a part of it. Let me just say that. People are like, well, you don't think they work hard? You always work hard to get somewhere good. That's always the case. Hard work is not ing one ingredient of any kind of success. But what I'm telling you is that in America, there's another ingredient. In America, if you are an ADOS person, especially there's another ingredient. You have to be willing to sign over some stuff in terms of, like you just said, your agency. So don't present yourself to me as a boss. Now, if you want to, if we want to one day become a boss, we got to be political and we got to get honest about what that looks like. But the first thing you got to do if you want to become a boss is you got to admit that you're not a boss. If you can't build no kind of uh, uh, a black Hollywood, if you can't do deals with the people you want to do deals with, you don't have boss power. Power. And we have to admit that in the first thing they say, the first step to everything, right? Whether you, no matter what you got wrong in your life, the first step, the first step is always to figure out who you are. And there's no, they, and, and, and that's the problem with the decadent veil. They don't tell the truth. The problem is that they don't tell the truth. And if you have one or two of them who tell the truth, they get shut out. That's the whole problem. Ain't nobody working together. Yeah, we're going to get together and make boss moves. No, you're not. None of y'all are going to make boss moves because none of y'all are bosses. <laughs> That's just what it is. Now, you got to stop talking like a boss if you ain't a boss. If, if you can't have an ADOS agent, and I'm not saying that you have to. You can have somebody that you work really good with. But if you don't feel like you can speak to that person in a certain kind of way, I don't know if they work for you. My point is everybody just got to get honest about who they are. Everybody has to get honest about who they are and what they can do and what their limitations are. I don't, I don't understand. And then there was another part of what she said. Well, she shouldn't expect anything um, to make up with, 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 um, with Tyler Perry in terms of Monique. She made up with Lee Daniels. Nobody's saying that people can't make up. Nobody's saying that he, he has to uh, write a $100 million check. But there's stuff you have to do to move into the direction of making up. Y'all ain't have no problem with Dame Dash check Lee Daniels and say, I want my money that he loaned him. Right? Now, he got his money back. Good for him. Lee Daniels and Monique made up good for them. I'm not saying, listen, we got to define agency. There, there are degrees to these things. You should, even if, even if white folk own the, the studios and stuff, you should be able to do work with the people that you can do work with. So, and if you can't do that, if you can't work with the people that you decide to work with, right? Or if you don't feel powerful enough to tell the person that I don't want to work with you, I can't call you a boss. Maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe it is me. Right? Maybe that's just a problem with me. I can't do it.
is a certain people I just can't call boss. And I can't come outside and say boss moves. I know it ain't boss. Everything ain't boss. Just because you wear a certain look, you have a certain kind of clothes, that's not boss to me. It don't even look like, let me just say this. I would, it don't even, forget boss. Like, let's talk about baby boss. Like, are you, are you working in the direction of baby boss? I, <laughs> These things are all problematic to me. It may not be a problem to you, but I think when you get, let me just say this. Let me talk about one way to correct some of these things. Listen, if you get in a room with white folk and they start, they start making uh, sameness arguments about we're the same. I don't care where they from. I don't care whether it's somebody, it's a, it's a Chinese person start talking about building the railroads, an Indian American person saying we all brown, uh, a Jewish person saying the Holocaust was just like, um, what, I don't care. You have got to have the information to talk about your limitations as a group that are different from them. Because what Ian then said, well, you just got to be willing to work for no money. And, and, man, come on. What are we talking about? Like, the ways in which you allow yourself to be spoken to are also a problem. The way in which you allow other people to talk to you and about you, that's also a problem. You have to have the knowledge. And I ain't got no time. I ain't got no time. That's what Kanye said and everybody went with it. I ain't got no time to read no books. Kanye said his life is a book. We got to get honest. And, I, and listen, I'm, I, like I said, I'm not going to take much time today. Um, I, you know, I, 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 feel like, I feel like everybody, every, every Negro in entertainment is chasing money. And I feel like, you know, chasing money is sometimes the opposite of chasing integrity. Chasing money is sometimes the opposite of chasing collective uplift. Chasing money is opposite the opposite is often the opposite of chasing community. Chasing money is often the opposite of chasing collective uplift. And in terms of our community and what we need to do and how we need to do it, that becomes a problem. I don't say join ADOS.com just because for my health, but because we need politics. Uh, too many people believe that you can do all of this stuff without politics. There's, there's, we have whole ethnic lobbies. We have just read the book, the, 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 the other 1% Indians in America. They have ethnic lobbies on Capitol Hill, right? We used, and it was, it was, it was mimicked off of what happened in the civil rights movement. This idea that you can do it without this is a problem. The idea when you get in these rooms with these people and they say we're the same and you don't know how to push back against that. You don't have a baseline. I give Ian credit. He had a baseline. He knew a lot about his people and his family. Why don't you know? Do you want to be white too bad to know? Do you have a problem with truth too much to know? I don't know. But it's a problem. It's a real problem. I'm just going to tell everybody, and if you don't see it as a problem, I don't know. And I don't know how anybody could. Listen, this is a condemnation of the decadent veil. This is a condemnation of this is a condemnation of who they actually are and who they say they are. Right. Who you actually say you are is one thing who you actually are and what you actually do is another thing. Go back and look to that that Kevin Hart interview where he had Tiffany Haddish on there. He said, I take responsibility for everything. He talked about working hard and all this stuff. And there's, a, there's, a, there's other stuff that goes to it. So I'm not, like I said, I don't want to take too much time. I'm about to just go to break, um, and I'll set the phones up. And those of you all, um, you know, uh, <laughs> those of you all can, if you want to chime in, you absolutely can. Um, but, you know, I, and even those of you all who disagree, you can chime in. You absolutely can. I am not a person who is going to censor you. Like, if you insult me, I'm going to hang up on you. I ain't crazy. But, like, please feel free to call in and say whatever you got to say. I just feel like there's a lot of, of stuff going on. When somebody tries to come in and tell the truth, it becomes, or tell their truth, whatever that truth is, right, it becomes a problem. It becomes, ah, that's not how bosses move. Most of y'all don't know how bosses move. Y'all ain't billionaires. How do you know how bosses move? Uh, anyway, so give me about five minutes. I'll set up the phones, um, and we can have a conversation.
All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, fam. We are back. Hey, please try to, um, like, I want to get to as many calls as I can. Um, please try to land your plane, though. Please try to have your comment kind of concise so we can kind of get to the nitty and the gritty, 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 as I always say. Um, also, please like. Y'all have made me tired. <laughs> please, please like and subscribe. Um, if you like what you have not, because we're going back to politics, we're going back to regular politics too. Not just regular. This is this is a part of politics, but I'm saying that like we do we do for those who are new here, we also do <laughs> we do we do we do we do journals and articles. We do all kinds of stuff. So um, I don't want nobody to be shocked and dismayed. Um, oh, hold on a second. Do 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 do. Three one two three one two. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Three one two. Oh, three one two. People just be doing all kinds of stuff. Oh, three one two hung up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, three one four. Nine one four. What's going on? Hello, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Um. I'm just curious. You said you have to be a billionaire to be a boss. I wasn't sure about like, uh, be a what? What I say? Mean by that? What'd you say? Tell me about if you're not a billionaire, you're not a boss. No, I say I said some of some people say, "Oh, Kevin Hart's a billionaire. He's a boss. This is how boss moves." And I say, "You, if you're not a billionaire, you don't know how a billionaire boss moves. Like, stop talking about like." what he has to do or saying that yeah he has those limitations see some people will say well he has limitations y'all don't understand how a billionaire gotta move well you don't understand it either you're not there either you may be a lot closer right, to me okay, but you don't understand okay. it either right 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 i hear you i hear you because you could be a boss on any level yeah not necessarily a billionaire right 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 you can have employees you. Okay, just... you can have employees right now and make and make a hundred thousand dollars a year and be a boss right Right. No, no, I get it. I get it. I just was curious. That's all. Thanks for clarifying it. No problem. No problem. You have a good one. You too. I'm going now to 912. 912, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Alasia. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, turn your background down now. Alasia. Alasia. Listen to you, Yvette. I've been with you. I am 75 years old. Oh. And I've been listening. Yes, yeah, I've been listening to you for so so long. We are with you. To us, you are our leader. You are our goddess. You are divine Aww. and you're sacred. I want you to know, mommy or Sylvia Yale is definitely with you and blessing and protecting you. And you are so right. Pay us our money. Our ancestors died, so we will be free to live. So we will be free. Now you owe us. Hey, uh, another thing before I go, you know, your inboards, which we call white people, okay, are coming on all different types of podcasts, I'm going to say it, that we can see, and they're talking to him about, uh, about us. They're not saying, okay, we're going to give fight for you to have reparations. I don't hear that out their mouth. Until they say that, what do you have to talk to us about? Good blessing to you. I love you, and especially tone too. Alright, absolutely. Your so blessing to you from the heavens, from your research, and believe and keep up the good work that you're doing. It. We are descendants, African descendants of the slave, and we are blessed. And so thank are you. you. Thank and you, man. I appreciate it. We love you. Love you back. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Let me um let me go to my next caller. Um let me go to do 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 four six nine four six nine. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, good evening, Yvette. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. No words for well. <laughs> okay, good deal, good deal. Well, this is Freeman in Dallas. I wanted to uh just uh, give you a couple of uh bits of data uh you can check on later. Um, back in 2014, I remember seeing some, I was um, subscribed to Foreign Affairs Magazine, and I started seeing uh, several articles about hip-hop diplomacy. And 
and how the U.S. Uh, State Department was using hip hop to uh, engage the use of other countries around the world. Uh, and there's a good book you might want to check out. It's called Build the Power of Hip Hop Diplomacy in a Divided World. It's basically a good synopsis and overview of the modern version of the article that you had uh, had up with uh, Satchmo uh, and his wife in front of the Sphinx back in the day. So, I mean, they're, they're doing it. They've been doing it. I could go on, but I'm going to land my plate. Just, just check that book out. It's called Build the Power of Hip Hop Diplomacy in a Divided World by Mark Cash. You'll love it. Okay, thank Take you. I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down, fam. I appreciate. Uh oh, sorry. I wrote it down, fam. I oh, appreciate no you. <laughs> I appreciate you. I got it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, right. thank you. Uh, thank you, American lady. I got him. I get him. I get him in right now. Giddy me, giddy me. And I, you know what? I hope nobody. I'm not hating on nobody. I just don't like stuff that's not good for all of us. I think, I think, I think we have to push. Now you said nine five one. Okay, nine five one. What's going on? Hello. What's going on? I was having a wish. Not too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Curtis. You want me to call in? Yeah, go ahead with it. Oh, okay. I didn't know what the misunderstanding was, but it's like uh, you bringing up the stuff about, you know, I used to speak about Monique and whatnot. Yeah. As if, like, she just turned down a virtue. Like, uh, you know, between her and Kevin Hart. Well, we know, from, like, what you say, we all locked out because of, you know, uh, sorry about that. For whatever reasons, you know, like mm -hmm. historical, political, you know. So how is it's just like Monique just on the bad end of the stick? That's all it is. I mean, it ain't no right or wrong. I mean, she but they could be Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart could be her, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, but they're not. I think, I think, I think, I think anything is possible, and I don't think, I don't think anybody's a paragon of virtue. I don't even think, I don't think of myself. I think I'm, I think I'm way more more than a lot of Negroes, and I think I operate that way, and I have always, but I, I don't, I still don't think of it as a, as a paragon of virtue. But like, if, if, a, if, if, you know, if I had a tail, I might be a donkey. But like, so anything could have turned out differently. It could have turned out that Monique was the one on the bad end or whatever, and Kevin Hart was asking, was asking for a favor. My, then my, then my conversation would be different. It would say Kevin Hart, uh, Monique is not doing right by Kevin Hart, right? Like any of us could be anything given our choices in life. But one of the things I will say is that I watched Monique be shut out for a number of years based off of her deciding to be loud about being treated wrong, right? That resonates with me. Do she fit? But for the people that are, because we, we both, would you agree how that in this entertainment, that this, this is just being chosen by white cap, right? So it could be Kevin Hart, it could be Kevin, any one of these guys, but they all dick it and deal, you know, like, so it, it, it really don't, you know, it's not like a, these entertainers. You know, yeah, no, I agree. In the dick and the deal, you, you know? Yeah, but I think there are levels in anything, right? So, like, we can come in here and say all politicians are awful. And and for the most part, you know, uh, uh, they're beholden to money. But we need that, not to cut you off. I'm sorry. But, but when you say politicians, that's something we would need. You know, like you said, Capitol Hill determines the winners and losers. True. But these are comedians. These True. are people that are taking our space from the focus that you say we need to do. But but, but, but let me just I mean, say this. Let me just say this. It's not I, like Monique is saying. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I think we can. And I'm gonna let you Go finish. Ahead. I'm not gonna cut you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cut you short or none. So no need to. You don't have to rush. I'm, I'm not gonna cut you short. See, I think there's a lot right. to be learned through the lens of the one-off, right? So yes, we need politicians. My point though is that like. You may find one that even though they're bad, they're able to show you something or do something that matters. What this to me is, is a lens through which to understand how bad the decadent veil is. It's not to say that anybody, any individual person is a paragon of virtue, but when you see how this whole thing unfolded over about, this is like an eight year period. What happens is that you're able to go and look at all these people's behavior and say, okay, I see. So we talk about the decadent veil all the time, but you it's rare that you can go in and make a specific kind of he did this and she did that and he did that. That's, to me, what creates a teachable lesson in all of this. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, uh, I guess it's like technically it could be, but we're talking about, look, this woman is out here fat-mouthing about some person. 
So it's like you at home having a conversation and y'all, he, he feels like, oh, you got a million subscribers now. Now you think you done blew up. But back in the day, he used to say this. Man, come on. But is that what the argument is over? Is that what the... Come on. But is that what the argument is over? Because I feel like, I feel like the argument isn't over bad mouthing, right? I feel like... I feel like the argument is over. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish this point. I feel like the argument is over what happened to me in terms of and what happened to Ados in terms of Joy Reid. Somebody could say that she was bad mouthing us, but she was lying. So if 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 Tyler Perry is lying on Monique, then that's a lie. And I think we have to talk about how they move because he's on TV talking about we Christians and we all this. Now you may know that, and I may know that these people ain't real Christians like that, right? But now I have something to show you that this isn't who he is, right? So for me, it becomes bigger than that. But go on, I don't want to interrupt you. I want you. I don't want you to forget your point. Well, because it's like we keep. I keep going back to the entertainers. At the end of the day, if he would have got Monique that shot, she would just be. Another person that another thirsty comic would be hating on because it's only one brother at a time, like Eddie Murphy said. They're going to pick one dude that can cross over to, you know, do shows for white people, whatever that, that people that white like, kind of like how Oprah, she's the one person at a time that can sit in the white living room or whatever. So, and then the way she put it out, like, oh, okay, she come on your show and talking about, you know, this, that, and the third, or she going to Shannon Sharp show, and just put all this mess out when at the end of the day, it's still we come back to the to the reality that it's we're being locked out anyway because of like you say the Jim Crow the mass you know the but uh, but but, but and, and, and Paul the history of that. and so Paul never had a chance anyway but no but Pauls see see here's the thing here and here's and here's where I kind of divert from that so yes we're locked out anyway right I don't think we understand the right. limits to which. Because it's not just about let's, it's not just about Monique and DL and and the and all the, the 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 things that they have with each other. It's about the lie that they tell us about we're great people, right? And then listen, they all want to entertain because that's what they are. Comedians are entertainers, so we can we can put that on the table. Yes, they all want to entertain. They, that's what they all want. But my thing is, what you learn from that conversation is that because I wasn't willing to lose money to go and tour for Oprah in a different country. All of a sudden, I get blackballed. So there is no sister girl, no sisterhood. And so you get to see these people as pawns that I know they are, as opposed to I'm a baller, I'm, I'm about black excellence, I'm whatever. So to me, because these people have a role, they have a role to play in our politics. They make us feel bad about who we are. Oh, my God, so you should have just did like me. Uh, you should just, no, 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 no. What you did was, was what you did for white folk. Right, you you haven't done anything for a sister or a brother or whatever, and and you accept try to exploit them, right? We even saw that with Oprah, and she was handing out whatever. I believe that that has a role in terms of what's teachable, and I also believe. Listen, I understand what the decadent veil is, but I also understand what the decadent veil could be. It doesn't. It didn't have to be that way. It didn't have to be captured by whiteness. Just the same way I can say our politicians didn't have to be captured by whiteness. It could be different. It could just give us good art. That's just not where we are. But you, you go. I, I would say that that's the the requirement to get into politics until we do like you say and, and really challenge the system in the political way and make political and, and become uh, like you say the, with ADOS becoming a, st a specific group that has specific protections like the LGBTQ or whatnot. But until we do that, we won't have the results that we are saying that we should need now. Right now, we have the, we don't have the results of the system that is already established through capitalism. So they just kind of caught up in the capitalism too with no protection. So mm -hmm. it's every man for mm -hmm. itself when they already coming in from the basement. You know, they got to step and fix. Mm -hmm. They can't do certain roles or certain things. One guy, you know, or they're going to be placed out by whatever, you know. Without, so that's why I was saying like, okay, so yeah, Monique said this, this, and the third. But they're using us to propagate this message. So she can get a bag, then Monique, well, she's going to run off. You know? What? She's going to do like everybody else. When she get up there, she's going to run off, too, to have to maintain that. Well, well, we I, need it on this level. Why well, would they pay for somebody that's well, here's, getting, you know, entertainers? Yeah, but here's, here's my, here will be my pushback. I, th I, I do agree that the requirement... The requirement to be, especially to be on a certain level of comedian, or to be on a certain level of entertainment, let's take comedians out of it, requires for you to sell out. 
Prior to Monique talking, though, I didn't have no proof. I had no proof of that. These people were going around talking about black excellence. They were going around talking about Tyler Perry was throwing out Bible verses every day. Um, uh, uh, and I had no proof that this is how they move. Kevin Hart was saying, you just got to do it, and I be helping everybody all the time. I ain't scared of nobody. This is, I, what this gives me is a lens into which what is real and what is false. And people can do with that what they do with it. I hope that they do say, hey, this is messed up, and we got to do some politics. That's what I hope they take away from it. Now, I, I, listen, I wish Monique well. I hope she does entertain. Everybody got a job to do, whether you're a plumber or whether you work at the factory or whether you whether you have to drive lift or whatever. Everybody has the way to feed. But So I'm not looking at her as a paragon of virtue, but I think she, by her doing what she's doing and kind of forcing these apologies, you get to see that these people were always the people we said they were. Yeah, but well, just people that needed to, they're just doing what they have to do to perform in that space. Because again, we don't have the capital to support them, like you say, because of the, you know, the circumstance for what not, for lack of better words. So they're going to just by, you know, result of that, they got to do that. So for her to come, I feel like she being, I feel like she using us, trying to try to run game, basically. Like yeah, like Cat Williams. Oh, this dude, that this dude, that. Okay, you act like you was out here trying to feed kids or, or make sure kids, you know, you know, then they'll throw out a little thing. Well, I, I got this and I got, man, you ain't no different. It's a, you know, excuse me, I'm talking about, but it's a K for all of them because I mean they ain't helping nobody. Well, here's what here's what I would say. Here's what I would say, and let me and let me and let me and let me let me help you let me help you understand why I think it's beneficial in terms of this project. I'm not even take take apart what they're saying. I'm talking about this project that I work on. Here's why I think it's beneficial. Jay Z, however, I remember doing a Jay Z video that was I got like two hundred thousand views on that video. When I said Jay Z isn't deep, this isn't deep. Saying I do what the Jews do, that's not deep, right? Jay Z went before the NFL and said don't kneel no more, right? And and he gave everybody T-shirts and everybody went with it. Recently, Jay Z got Jay Z got on the Grammy stage and he stood up for Beyonce and say she's old, she should have a Grammy and y'all don't do stuff right. And I believe I believe Beyonce should have got a Grammy for Lemonade, right? I believe that. But but my thing is, people still don't believe that Jay Z is like you said, all entertainers, right? So that includes Jay Z, right? Right. People don't believe that. So if if at any time I have a tool to help people see based on what happened, right, to this person. Like, it's, to me, it's not just about, like, you may have some problem with what Cat Williams said or something Monique said, but to me, this gives me a lens into, because when you say, well, we all know that. No, we don't. Because a lot of people on my timeline and around me were saying, man, he was he really be standing up for people. He always stand up to white supremacy. And I said, did we just forget? So you give me, by standing up the way that she did, now, I will say this, she could have just sold out, went on tour and say, I'm going to eat it. Right? I'm not saying that that makes you Rosa Parks, but I'm saying that that is something that says I am not going to bend to this person who is bigger than I am, and they all bend. And it gives me a lens in which to talk about the people by having proof as opposed to just telling people something and nobody believes me. I had somebody who tried to fight me one time over Jay-Z, and he was a whole grown man. So I'm saying that like it gives you people... I think you overestimate the extent to which people understand things, and I think giving them a real-world example of something that's happening right now is helpful. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Because like when you just mentioned the Jay-Z thing, I was like, that's my point. Like yeah. he made all this fuss, but then once they cut him the check to do the to be the man over the uh, halftime show or whatnot, he's like, "Hey, I've got a bag. Why don't y'all chill out now?" And that's what she wants. She not because I really, I feel like she manipulating because she ain't funny enough to do it on her own. She would have got it out the mud. They all, but she did get it out the mud. Let me just say, like, like to me, I watched this in real time. Monique was the funniest one in the Queens of Comedy. Monique was the funniest one in the, that Almost Chris movie. I believe that. She got it out the mud to me. But the thing that happened is, when you get blackballed by powerful people, I appreciate you coming out and saying, I got backballed by these people. Like, and I'm not going to do it. Now, what happens normally is you get blackballed by people like, I don't believe Jay-Z got the money he said he got. That deal with the dude who's the head of Twitter, and all of a sudden that went down next thing you know he was selling crypto in the ghetto. I don't believe none of that. 
But I, but not enough people will back down and say, Jay-Z treated me wrong for me to say that about him. I can say it now about Tyler Perry because of what happened with Monique. And I do believe, I don't believe you can be a famous comedian without getting out of the mud. I don't care who you are. Like, it's too hard to be a comic. It's too many comics at these clubs. They drive too far. It's too hard. So you had to, I believe, that's one respect I'll give them. That's one respect. I'll even give Joe Budden respect. You don't become a podcaster and, and have all them subscri subscribers without having, without doing something good. So I'm not, I don't want any Anybody believe I don't give these people a respect. I do. But I think this gives me an avenue through which to have a deeper conversation. Nobody's perfect. I'm not saying anybody's perfect. But the people who come out and say I have been treated badly and some of the people who treated me badly were other ADOS people, I I, 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 I want them. I, I will stand for them, right? Right? And because, because, and I will support them because everybody needs to be talking bad about the ADOS person who is not supporting them. Like everybody who is not being supported by by uh, who is being, but everybody's like, I don't want to talk bad about Jay Z. You know, I saw a guy come out and he should have known better. He said he did business with Diddy and Diddy took all the money and whatever. Well, you should have known better. But I appreciate you coming out and saying it because ye for years nobody believed. Like everybody was saying he does bad business and everybody and then a bunch of uh, allegedly and then everybody was like, no, you just you just you just didn't know the game. So that's kind of how I feel about it. I'm not gonna say too long. I want you to have the last word and then we can move on. But I appreciate your call. I appreciate your call. Yeah, you, all right, because yeah, I was going to say, that's my point about when you, that's how it all started. I was like, well, that's why I said the comment about when you speak about us having agency, nobody should be able to speak because it's like, it's, it's like we're moving the goalposts. Like, one minute is we locked out there, and once we get in, we going to treat, we going to moralize people. Hey, you wrong. You should have been nice. You should have did that. Well, he, Kevin Hart, he did. But like you said, we go in circles with it. I, I, I yeah, respect. but I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, and I share some I share some of the beliefs about the people who, you know, are there. But if I can have a lens through which to have this conversation and show you with proof and receipts, I like, I think, I think the people who came out, listen, I don't want anybody to be abused or nothing like that, but it's a lot of people after the whole allegations came out about Diddy, a lot of other people came out about business. It wasn't even about um, anything abusive in terms of relationship. And they would have never came out had the Cassie stuff not came out. And I still appreciate it because now I have some proof of some stuff. Now, does that, does, does that make, mean that they're great people or, or paragons of virtue, like you said? No. But it gives me something to say, ha, you see, I told you so. True, true. All right. Well, thanks for taking the call. And no problem. Guess, no problem. I wanted to know. Well, I got you on the line. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Go ahead. All right. We, you know how you talk about the ADOS and all that, and I really, you know, I'll be interested in that. And I'll be thinking, like, how do you, like, uh, when you go to your ADOS page, where they show you, like, I know, you know, you got all the smart people in the comments. They're probably about to be draining. But how you start like a law or something like when we if we see something in our community that be like hey man we, we can make effective change here how do we get into that discussion where we get the game or the information to try to affect the change so like you know so where we can get well, on that type of have you have you, know, you have you joined have you joined yet you, you sound smart no, to me how did so <laughs> No, I said you sound smart to me. I said, you know, I think you just go, I think you just go to joinados.com and we're rolling out chapters. We rolled out chapters in 2023. We rolled out chapters in 2024. Um, and we just had a political training, which is about what you talk about, about how to localize, you know, policies, how to change policies in our neighborhood, how to, how to get resources, you know, how to decide where to start. So we just had, we just had two trainings about that. Um, so yeah, I think the first step is to join. Um, where are you at? If I, if I can speak. I'm in St. Louis. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think you need to join. Yeah, yeah. We got some good people out there. So I think you need I think you need to join. And that's that's one of the things we're training people on. Um and I think you would be an asset to that. So All right, well appreciate it. Again, thank you for taking the call and uh yeah, you know, I'm a bit long winded anyway. So No, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And listen, like, fam, right. I don't have no problem. That was a great disagreement. I don't have no problem with that. You know, <laughs> and you know, like I you know, everybody got they everybody also got their view on stuff you know some people like i don't like monique no more like i i understand that some, some people like i liked that when she was in the skinny bitches face you know <laughs> so it's i i get it i get it but sometimes you go through stuff child you don't be want to be bothered with none of this stuff this other stuff uh but i'm going now to um i'm going now to do 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 718 718 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind uh-oh here we go Hey, Vet, this is Claudio in Brooklyn. How you doing? Hey, Claudio, what's going on with you? 
I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, shout out to all the New York chapter folks and hey. uh, the policy team for that training because uh, I was in one of them trainings and, and that's exactly what folks need to be able to kind of get stuff popping on the local. Exactly. Market. But um, I just uh, to quickly kind of chip in on the decadent bail conversation. I went to the Brooklyn Museum today, which has an exhibition which is from the private art collection of Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats. And it's called Giant, and it's almost, I want to say it's probably exclusively black art, but it's a mix of ADOS art and other black folks, um, both black Americans that are not ADOS and even just African and black Caribbean artists. Um, so they have the Kehinde Wileys and uh, a lot of uh, iconic Gordon Parks photographs. I think they have like the largest private collection of Gordon Parks photos. And uh, it was wow. interesting because I was there with a black Caribbean homie and was, had to explain kind of the, the why I initially just bristled at the thought of this private display of wealth and what it was supposed to signal to me as a black American. Oh. Wow. Wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about how much art that is. <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean, it, I mean, it's beautiful. It's clearly worth a lot of money, but it's. I mean, the Brooklyn Museum is in itself, like, it, it just it makes me think of the institutions that we don't have politically, right? Because we can have an institution like the Brooklyn Museum, which does put a lot of emphasis on, on black artists and, and even on ADOS artists and different things like that. But to the extent that, like, the Brooklyn Library and the Brooklyn Museum, which are kind of close to each other, are putting on major exhibitions that are like Swiss Beats and Alicia Keys' private art collection and the Jay-Z exhibition that was at the Brooklyn Museum, or library rather, for like a whole year. It's just the way in which, um, you know, these displays of black art and purported black excellence, which I would say, yeah, maybe musically, but I mean, I, I ride my, my, my stuff past Barclays Center and Atlantic Yards, which is where Jay-Z really pushed for the Barclays Center, this big basketball and sports arena to be developed and totally gentrified the entire neighborhood and made it so that downtown Brooklyn is now a playland for everybody who's not paid off and who got wealth. I mean, the apartments down there are now going for five, six, seven thousand dollars a month. And, uh, you know, and, and, and it was just off the strength of this, yo, I'm black, yo, I'm from Brooklyn, yo, I got it out the mud, yo, I used to sell this, that, and the other up at Marcy, and now we're big time, look at me, I'm on the subway with this old little white lady, she don't even know that I'm the Sean Carter, you know, like, it's, it's, it's frustrating to see that in your face and to be here, and in New York, we've got a lot of black immigrants, so maybe it signals something else to them, because they may have more resources to make this aspirational, but for us, it's just fantasy. Mm. Mm. Like, we got but, it and uh, we made it. You've been on point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild, fam. Like, yeah, like, I think it's, I think it's supposed to signal, like, we got it and we made it, right? Like, oh, my God, if, if, if Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats have this thing here, we really are getting it out the mud, right? We really are doing our thing. And it's just like, like no, that's not, <laughs> that's not what this signals yeah. for you at all. <laughs> <laughs> And they, and they made clear their intentions, and I'll finalize with this because it was even more egregious, too. But it's like, even in the beginning, when you first get there, there's like a quote from Swizzy, and he's like, you know, like, the reason why we did this exhibition is because we need more people of color to own people of color's art. And so aside from the POC stuff, which drives me mad, makes me pull out a little bit of hair I have left. <laughs> like, there's a reason why Adolf people don't own Adolf's art. Let's talk about the reason why we don't own. Yeah, do you know how much it costs? This stuff costs. Yeah, like well, we, it's, it's almost you know, it's almost like to being an art dealer. Well, it's almost like we're just sitting around with money, saying, "I don't know, I don't, I think I'm going to buy a factory. I don't think I, I, I don't think I'm really into yeah. art." <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew how to put my all my wealth and my riches to a better use, but instead, I'm just going to you know play the numbers every day. You know, like I'm going <laughs> to you know throw it away in the wind. It's like no, like we're not sitting on mountain piles of dough and just don't know the benefits of art collecting. It's like, talk to me nice. Come on, say some real stuff. Like, but wasn't that, wasn't, that in his, wasn't, that in, wasn't that in Jay-Z's album, though, 999, for whatever the heck that thing was, like, we, the problem is we don't buy art. And it was just like, all the Negroes like, yeah, you know what, Jay-Z, right, we got to go buy some art. That's all the hip-hop world was like, yeah, we got to buy some art. We all got to have a box out on the wall for our daughter to play with, you know, to see her uh, SpaghettiOs on it. You're not doing it like that. Then you're not a boss. It's yep, yep, yep. We got, yep. I agree. I agree. Thank you, fam. <laughs>
You are not a boss. Hey, well, thank you, man. No you problem. Know. No problem. Man, Appreciate you. Good. Appreciate you as always, Claudio. Yeah, yeah if you're not doing it like that, you're not a boss. It's not a boss move. <laughs> you, you thought it was a boss move. It's not a boss move. Hey, quickly, we have new merch. Uh, uh, ADOS History. Uh, Black History for some of you all, if you want to, if you're an ally. Um, merch is um, at, at, if you go to ADOSFoundation.org, we have new merch there. Some snazzy, snazzy shirts um, and different things like that. That are, I, This is our, our blueprint and fingerprint from, from the time this country was a country. Um, so... That's my commercial for now. Also, don't forget the conference will be in October. That is my commercial for now, and we will go. That's crazy. Woo. Uh, but well, we will go to the next caller. I am going now to 973-973. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, Vet. I'm calling from New Jersey. Hey. How are you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Good. There has been a lot of walking around what our actual issues are. Mm. Uh, and flipping our issues um, through the theatrics so that we see it from somebody else's side. And I've been watching this for the past two, three weeks. It started with it started with that Brad. The who? Lunell on. And he was they were talking about, uh, you know, uh, why people aren't paid based on on Monique. You know, why black people aren't paid. And he actually threw out there that, you know, it takes a lot of effort and risk to start up a project. And I hire black people, but nobody, when the project fails, wants to give me back the money that I pay them. Which is telling someone to work for free. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and it turned out uh, that from Fridays, John Witherspoon had been on there previously and he talked about how he was paid $5,000 to me. Fridays, they were all paid five thousand dollars, and the box office yielded twenty-seven point eight million. Mm. But they were at a loss because, of course, they weren't going to get paid. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, there is there is sort of a natural structure. So who is a boss? And the services that they are <laughs> that they are entitled to. Not how much they pay, but what what they are entitled to get in order to make revenue. And what we have we have no agency in that. There is no expectation set about what we get paid or with any of our livelihood or living situation, there is no expectation mm -hmm. in that. In 2003, the UN had a conference in Durban on racism. And I still don't know who represented the U.S. there. But I know that I saw Danny Glover on TV talking about how great the conference was. But he said absolutely nothing about any of the issues. They drag Danny Glover everywhere, child. He, they have him everywhere. But is he, he is not a representative. No. He's not a professional. He's not, he's not elected. He's not elected, and he doesn't represent an organization. To me, those are two of the main criteria. Are you, are you, are you elected? Or do you do you represent a membership of people somewhere, right? A movement somewhere. If you don't represent any of those, why well, you're just an old actor and respectfully. An old actor or a young actor, a new yeah. actor. Yeah. A yo old young I, actor, baby actor. You still you still you still you don't represent anything or anyone. Or any agenda. No. You have you even as representing yourself as black. You haven't represented your experience. And when I 
look at when I looked at Monique, it was I was there. See, I get emotional, but I was getting really furious because it was like a distraction. It was like a segue from Vlad uh, talking about her euphemistically to her having an opening once again. And I've been with her the whole time. I was with her mm -hmm. in 2000. Talk your talk. When, when Barbara Walters had her on The View, she was the first, to me, that I remember, the first black woman on The View. And the first thing Barbara said when she walked on the stage was she talked about her hairy legs. She talked about, she called her twin creatures. How are those creatures? And when she was ready to leave, she was sitting next to Joy Behar. And she turned to Joy Behar for a high five. And she said to, to Monique, you go, we stay. And we had to deal with that at work the next day. We all ended up at our table in the, in the lunch office pissed and we get this every day we get these undertones of racism to let you know you're walking through a revolving door when you walk around here we get that every single day that we work in an office so now to see her talking about everybody except barbara is Barbara alive? I understand. Hold on, is Barbara still alive? No, she's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to talk to me. I have cancer. I don't care. Uh, she, she's not talking about that. I know she can't talk about that. But she doesn't have to make it hard either. and saying, get on board with my issue. You tell it too. You go out there and you tell everybody. But tell everybody what? What is the real problem? What is the real problem if you can walk into somebody's office and tell them what you want? If the people who are like you tell you, we don't want to talk to you. You're messing our thing up. That's why she's there. She's there because she has a public presence on a platform. She has the ability to be there. And she can leverage audiences by telling. I hear you, fam. I hear you. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you land your plane, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to another caller, fam. Yeah, but I agree with everything you're saying. You know, to me, there's no plane to land. I don't think we have a plane yet. That no, that's a shame. That's a shame. It's a shame to be here all these years and we don't have a plane to land. To fly? Do we have a plane to fly? No. Okay. Yep, that's a shame. That's the way it is. 
Soul Plane. They was all in Soul Plane. I'm sorry. 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 Bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> Give it hard. Right. Money. Everybody's in there. I'll just get. I'll just get on the Soul Train. Leave it alone. No, appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I like that call. That call was more like a kind of like a stream of thought. I like that. I like those kinds of calls. It's a stream. I'm thinking. I got a thought. It was good. I yeah. I you know. I just you know the way they treat us, and it's just I I just think it's 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 doubly something to have to get treated away, right by white folk, and then somebody tells you Oprah's a billionaire, and she wants to work with you, and you get with her. Y'all saw that thing I put up with y'all for Tony Braxton. What Tony? Remember when Tony Braxton that they made up? Everybody makes up with these people too. And I understand why, because you got to make up. Because if you don't make up with these folks, oh, she's this, oh, she's that. I told you she's just nasty. But it's just like Tony made up with, Oprah came on and said, well, you have, I heard you have Gucci flat. Well, Oprah, you went into a, you went into a, a store in Sweden or Switzerland or somewhere and complained about not being able to get a $38,000 pocketbook. If Tony Braxton could not afford Gucci flatware, then something is wrong. If something, if, if Tony Braxton, who, with all them Grammys, and Tony Braxton, who, who, who sang Unbreak My Heart, which was written by the, 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 the songwriter of this century, Diane Warren, I think it's her name. If, 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 if she cannot afford Gucci flatware, there's a problem. But you made it until Tony just can't manage money as opposed to Tony had to sue because she got back from two and only had $2,000 in royalties. That's what you did oprah and that becomes a problem so i'm going to my i'm going to my next call i think we gotta you know some stuff in terms of just how we deal with each other even if some stuff we can't do but the intentionality has to be there um let me go now to um i am going to 412 412 what's your name where you call it from what's on your mind hi my name is tracy how are you good how are you Oh, good. I've been listening to your broadcast. I only called you after five years and trying to get through the first time calling right. you. <laughs> all right, all right. How are you? Like Kevin Hart. All right, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> all right. Well, that's good. And I, I've been listening to you for the past couple of weeks. And I'm going to be honest with you. Boy, I got to boycott celebrities. I'm not into celebrities. I know it's the, it's the they're, they always always um, circle the wagons. I, 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 and then when everybody says they're a boss and we know who's leading them, no one's in control of Hollywood. Since, since the, night, well, the 1920s when they start black star circle, we know who leads them. And I can't look at them as um, role models. I can't look at them as anything but that because we know that they're not who true they're not true to their word I, I just can't i can't because they're mixed in with politics if they're not mixed in with politics you are a celebrity and they're kind of come to us and tell us what we have to do because we are the peons and they're supposed to be the upper enchilon and we're supposed to listen to them like when i was into moaning talk about what l sharpton did to her i mean that really i can't say l sharpton anyway but i just see what he's about too I see what Ben Crump about. I look at all of them and I observe what they do. So my thing is this. They don't talk about reparations. They don't talk about what we came from. Like the gentleman said, he went to go see an exhibit with um, Alicia Keys on Swiss mm-hmm. Beat. That's not for us. And I don't know why they start changing our name to people of color. I have a problem with that. A real problem with that. So I, I just want to know what your take is on just boycotting black celebrities. I'm at the point I don't, I don't even listen to none of them. I only watch YouTube. I only watch your show or I'm reading something, reading books about what people wrote back in the day to understand how did we get here? And we know that we are the people who they're trying to replace. We know that. We know that. So I just want your take on okay. what, what I'm saying okay. right now. Okay, I appreciate I'm, it. I'll, I'll answer. Point, I'm just... Okay, thank you, mm. thank you. I'll, I'll answer offline. But yeah, in terms of in terms of black celebrity in the boycott, thank you. I appreciate you calling in. Okay. I'm happy you finally got through. <laughs> but you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think I think we would I'm always around YouTube or I'm always on somebody's thing watching something. I don't do a lot of movies because I feel like most movies waste my time. That's a whole other thing for me. Right? Like I feel like movies tend to waste my time because they're not I I and maybe it's just my taste. I come across only a few good movies. Right? And after most movies, I just feel like my time was wasted and I never get it back. Um, so that's just kind of how I feel. And I'm probably an outlier in that. But, but in terms of everything else, I feel like, I feel like to a large extent, I boycott celebrity in general. 
um, for the most part. I feel like I do that just in general. I'm not buying things. I'm not usually buying tickets. Um, I I prefer a good fiction book to a movie. I feel like just a, a, even in no intentional way, I feel like I do that. So I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, so I don't have any problem with doing that. I think focusing, I would prefer everybody just kind of focus on politics more, right? As opposed to once you find out that what, like the, the, the big thing to me about Monique and all this other stuff is this, this how long, you, do y'all remember it was like six, seven years ago that I interviewed her? So you bring it all the way back. It took Lee Daniels this long to like, it was like 2022 when he apologized. Tyler Perry comes around. Well, how much did you lose because you didn't do what these Negroes said that you should do? And so once you see that there is no, we in it together, we, we going to do it for the culture. Once you see it's all a lie, then like what, what obligation do I have to support you? I don't really see any, right? I don't see most celebrities really out front doing something, anything political, doing something collective. And don't tell me nothing about giving out turkeys. I don't want to hear it. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. Not at all. Like, focus on yourself, focus on your community, focus on your politics. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Um, I'm going now to 347. 347, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hi, Yvette. Hey. I'm Paul in New York. What's going on, Paul? And, uh, so far, so good. Um, just reminded that with all of the conversation about the celebrity and bossing and, you know, the influence that they're exercising over people and our celebrities exercise over us, the beginning of the end in any real sense in mind, or putting it in our face, was when Etta James was supposed to sing at the White House. I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm sorry. I'm I, know what you're, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> the fact is that where are we anyway? Wait a minute. Who's saying at the White House? Don't you skip over it, fam. Who's saying at the White House, though? Oh, I did say it. I mean, maybe I didn't get hurt. It was, she got bumped for Beyonce. Oh, all right, and I Beyonce, uh, I believe that Bob Beyonce, as a newcomer on the scene, if there was any loyalty or any kind of, you know, looking back to our ancestors and, you know, all the things that we are claiming that we want us to do and, and, and to bring a collective movement on the level of us looking for our respecting of our elders, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Let's just leave it at that. If there was any kind of that, then Beyonce would have allowed not only Etta James to sing, but she would have celebrated and centered her in the entertainment moment. Because it was an entertainment, but it was also a political statement. And that statement wasn't it. Wasn't that statement, I'm in your face now. And if you won't follow with me, you're basically out of here. Well, and let me just say one. It let me may say. Not have been, let me say it one. May not have been, but is it? But is it? I agree. I agree with you about. I agree with you about celebrity. But let me say one other thing. Is it just celebrity? Because I would. I would make the point. Beehive, don't come at me. I ain't got no problems. Um, is it? Is it also the case that somebody, somebody could make the case? Wasn't it Kiki White who's been trying to have a country career for a very long time, and Beyonce comes and now she's gonna do country songs. Is it is it not the case that 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 the only thing that is, somebody could make the case it wouldn't it wouldn't be me <laughs> that the only thing that is centered is a kind of competition and a kind of usury amongst each other uh, as, uh, and I don't I'm not I'm not a fan of Kiki White's politics at all I heard her saying well black people don't, I'm, I'm saying that that's a kind of usury as opposed to um, any kind of collective uplift so if you've been trying to do country and then I see you and I say well I'm do country too. You know, I, and I don't have a problem with any ADOS person doing country because I know where it comes from. But, like, is there is there any kind of respect there? And then, didn't Etta James complain about Beyonce doing her song? I saw that. I saw that in real time before, rest I, in peace. I, I, at the time, I believe she that she kind of was in the same flavor as I'm saying. Kay, now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I, I said Kiki White. It says that K. Michelle. Child. I don't know these K people. Dip. I don't know nobody. I'm telling you. But go on, fam. I'm sorry. It's the wrong person. Wrong person. Yeah. 
think uh, and when and now this leads back to your beginning when you were talking about uh, the celebrities being sent around the world to soften the image of the ugly American and the United States not having been liked worldwide, not because of anything they were doing to us, but what they were doing to the people around the world anyway. So it wasn't even that we were being suspected or protected by our celebrities outside of the United States and giving the image of us being you know, under attack here, it was that we were softening white supremacy for the rest of the world. Mm, so yep. the conversation really walks around the concepts of democracy and capitalism. It wasn't really so much about democracy and communism, because mm -hmm. we already have communism for the rich. It's true. Because we don't have a republic. It's true. So communism is here. So we're not looking at the, the proper. We're not looking at it from the proper perspective. We need to see the opposition of the of capitalism and a republic, because a republic would be more an African style of communalism, where people shared the wealth in the community. Everybody got what they need, and the people who needed the most got the most help, which is back to nearly Fuller. So we don't really see the politics because we don't really understand the capital behind the politics. Capitalism drives democracy, and capitalism is really communism as a political asset, uh, as a political structure for the wealthy. We have communism for the wealthy as that political structure, and that's hidden. That's your decadent fail. Mm, okay, got you. Got you, fam. Got you. Well, so I... let's get to an understanding that we need to rally around. We need to ra we need to circle the wagons around our communities. The politics that we really need are the communal politics, the stuff that starts on the ground, wherever you stand. Because celebrity ain't looking at us. Celebrities circling the wagons around themselves. So if we don't do that right now and build power within our communities, like I'm in the projects. Okay. And 964 is the, is the HUD regulation that gives the project tenants their rights. But they will train you on Section 8 so that they can keep funding the buildings and not protecting the rights of the people. So what we need to do is that, and then now they're trying to defund Section 9. Mm. CFR 20, 24 CFR Section 9. They're trying okay. to defund it. But you do understand, but you understand why they will defund it. They will defund it because we don't use it. Mm. They will send workers from NYCHA around to the development and say, oh, this is the new privatization effort. So I'm talking about the new privatization effort, blah, blah, blah. But they never tell you about your rights that you already have to control your development under 24 CFR 9, 964, which is that you have a right to a resident management corporation, you have a right to the to the housing authority to train you to organize your tenant fellows, your, mm. your neighbors. And everybody should know that. And, and let me just say uh, one other thing. You're giving good information, fam. Them. But let me say one other thing. We don't talk We don't talk nearly enough about tenants. Yeah, go, we talk go, only go. about homeowners. But go ahead. Let me let you land your plane. Go right ahead, because we're almost at the two-hour mark. But yeah, you're giving some good stuff. They're about to defund it. We don't take, thank you. We... We don't take the responsibility of self-governance, and I, I'll land the point on that. All, the American experiment is really self-governance. And every time you get a chance to talk to your neighbors about how you want things to do, it's the most important thing. Because that's what the celebrity distracts us from. That's what movies keep us from doing. The purpose of entertainment is to stop talking about self-governance and talk about stories that don't mean anything and people that don't mean anything to us. Mm. And, 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 and understand something, people, and they tell you, too, that you don't have to get organized. Power is organized. Anybody who tells you that power is not organized is crazy. So they'll tell you, no, you don't have to do that. You just got to get it out the mud. You just got to do it individually, whatever the case may be. No, power is organized in a very real way. And what you see on TV may be entertaining. It, it may be whatever, but it has no impact on your life. And if you look to celebrities for any kind of political guidance, you're in trouble. 
the simplest thing is that if we sit around and talk and have conversations and brainstorm amongst our neighbors and amongst ourselves, that's the beginning of organization. It ain't that tough. Nope. You don't got to read the law until nope. you get to that level. But sitting around with your neighbors and having conversations about the things you want for your neighborhood is organizing. Because the more you do it, the more you'll see how to do it. Absolutely. Thank you, fam. That's a great That's a great word to end on. The more you do it, the more you see how to do it. Thank you, fam. Because you got to get out there to do it. Listen, you, 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 listen, you play how you practice. If you ain't practicing, you ain't going to do it. And too many of us listen to celebrities. And I think, to, to me, if this is nothing but a lens to listen to, listen, these celebrities are where they are because of what they won't do collectively, because of what they won't do and how they won't move. That's part of how they are where they are. Everybody ain't just getting it out the mud. And I think that's something that we have to focus on, something we have to know, something we have to own, and know that we got to do our own stuff. 313, I'm coming to you. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Three one three. Going once, going twice. Three one three. I don't know what you're doing. Having some Hello? fun. Hello. Yeah, three one three. What's going on? Hello? I was just about to hang up. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Three one three. Hi, How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I'm calling about all this uh, stuff going on in our community. Um, I do want to say one. Okay. I want to thank Shannon Sharp for uh, giving Monique and Kat the platform to speak out on what's going on in the um, in their community. Mm. Uh, it, it's a lot of backbiting and put down that's going on. Uh, Monique's been attacked on a lot of different avenues. She's um, not always been my favorite comedian. Mm -hmm. But that's over the fair. years, I've watched her. Uh, when she said about um, um, she wanted us to blackball, not blackball, but but not watch Netflix mm -hmm. in her behalf. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to fast forward. Everything she said was true. She's been attacked by Oprah. Oprah and her have had the same type of um, trauma. And we've all had trauma. And we know about our trauma. And she has not supported Monique the way she should have. And she's done her wrong, and so has Tyler. And Tyler has also been traumatized. And we know about Trump. Mm -hmm. And then when DL came and attacked her, the way he did was very unnecessary. They didn't do Cat Williams like that. But nonetheless, what I do want to say is Cat Williams has pulled her to the forefront and put her on tour with him, which mm -hmm. I respect. And I believe due to that, she will not have to sell out because I think he's going to show her the ropes on how to continue to get this without having to sell her so like a lot of, of the other ones have done. And I respect him for that. Mm -hmm. He's sold out already, and he's mentioned reparations on one of those tours. Mm -hmm. I commend him for that. Cat's a big guy. He's a giant to me. I respect him a lot. Again, okay. I will say that I respect Shannon Sharp for giving them the platform to get this ball on the road to say what's going on and to help black folks mm -hmm. maybe get the attention and recognition we need, and maybe we will get some of the things we need as a community, as a whole, because we do need to be made whole. Mm. Mm. That's a word, fam. I appreciate you. That's a word right there. I love you, uh, I, I, Yvette. That's all I want to say. I, lo I love you, you know back. I love you back. That's all I'm saying. Yep. And I wish they stop attacking this woman, because they just do Cat Williams like that. Well, and, and you know what? But you know what? They don't like for way. you... But you know what? You know one of the reasons I think... I don't think they were as organized when Cat came out either. Like, nobody knew that Cat was going to do that. I didn't even know the interview with Cat was coming until it came. And I think, I think they weren't as organized. I think they did come out later, but the thing that Cat did, he didn't say nothing. Right? And so they didn't have nothing to fight with because Cat just said it. Monique and, and her husband, they fight her, so they're going to be out there. They ain't going to be... But, like, he just said it and he went on. But Cat has also built, like, this huge infrastructure where he does all his tours and stuff himself, so he don't got to say nothing. Right? I got my tour. I'm on my tour. I'm doing my Dark Matter stuff. I ain't got to talk to y'all. I said my piece. I'm out. Deuces. But I will say this. People have the right to clap back however they going to clap back. And if you don't want them to clap back, don't clap first. Right? If, 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 if people, <laughs> you know, if, if people have the right to... Come on. Because I want to say something about that Dark Matter. Um, but you go ahead. Uh, finish up. I want to say this before I forget because I'm one of the older folks who watch you and I've been watching you for a long time. <laughs> I won't forget my talk. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh okay. You know, I'm going to 
know what? When I first saw that dark matter in my mind, because I'm a little older than most of y'all, I said, I love it because what he's still saying is black folks matter. Y'all don't get it. Yeah, we still matter. We're going to always matter. We, we, we want ours, and we're going to be made whole one way or another. I may not see it happen, but it's coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you, fam. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Thank you for the platform. And love thank you, you for the night. It's so much I can speak on, but... I, I just, I'm not today. Not today, but I, I appreciate <laughs> Another day, another day, then, another day. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. All right, you have a good one. You have a good one. And, I, you know, people going to listen. People got to clap how they going to clap back. People got to, if they want to clap back how they can't clap, then he just went back on tour. And I don't think anybody expected it. It was like, it was like you woke up when, 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 when can't clap, it's like you woke up and it was a meteorite. Just like, what? 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 What happened? What? what? Nobody expected, because... I think, and I think people don't understand. I was talking to somebody, and they was like, "Why did I, I don't know?" I think you know, re, they were talking about the reason people were responding to Cat Williams, and I was like, "Listen, this is a man who hasn't responded to anything for a very long time. People have called him everything but a child of God. It, the drugs was only a part of it, right? They, 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 they talked about oh, the, the, he he was in, he was fighting the kid, he was in the Walmart. Oh, his kids got that. They talked about everything, and this man, he used to sometimes say something a little bit to TMZ, but he didn't say a lot." To nobody. And so what happens is if you're that person and you don't say a lot, when you say anything, I, it just explodes everything. And I don't think anybody was ready for that. I think they were more ready for Monique because she's been going back and forth for a while. But I think it was great. I think people get y- y'all can't control the clap back. You can't be like, well, she shouldn't have said it. you don't get to control that. If you don't have somebody's name in your mouth, like you don't get to say what they do. If you've done business with somebody and they don't like it or whatever, you don't get to say how they respond. They get to respond how they want to respond. Right. And I don't see anything wrong with the responses. Now, that's me. I understand that we're not all the same. That's fine. I understand that. <laughs> but it is what it is. So I'm going to another call. Um and and this 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 might be my last call, y'all. This might be. I got. I know the calls are full. I just you know we're almost two hour mark. Um, two o five. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. How about you? So my name's Brandon. I'm from hey, Brandon. Alabama, or whatever. And I'm 25, so I'm a little bit younger than maybe I guess like the demographic and like on the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I just want to give my perspective on kind of like some of the stuff that y'all been talking about. But I guess just sure. like from a younger. A younger perspective. Sure, go ahead. All right, so my first thing, um, so like with entertainers, me being a young man, my dad was like very, like very present in my life. So like I, I don't, like I don't have any, like I, I'm a very, how do I say, um, I'm firm, I'm firm in like my morals. I'm firm in like kind of like the old school way of thinking. Like you gotta, you gotta put time into, into something to make it work. You understand what I'm saying? Like if you want anything out of life, you gotta work hard to do it. Like nothing's gonna be given to you, right? Mm-hmm. Um. He told me, he was like, a lot of people look at entertainers and look at, you know, people that play basketball, or especially black people. We look at these people, we put them on, on this pedestal because they, you know, they, be- they become successful by doing something. Instead of understanding that they took their time to really hone their craft and really create what they wanted and then got there, we just glorify what we see. And what we see is what? You know, the chains and the money and the cars and all that stuff, the flashy, the glamour stuff, right? We don't take the time to really sit back and say, damn, what this person do? to really achieve achieve this goal. You understand what I'm saying? I'm saying we just look at the shortcut. That's why we get so enamored or we get so, you know, up in arms when our favorite entertainer or our favorite, you know, anything has something to say and then we don't agree with it. Or they say something or they do something and, you know, they kind of get some backlash and now we kind of feel like, oh, we got to protect them. When in reality, if we were to meet this same person in, like, in real time, I mean, we don't know how the person, what their personality really going to be like. Instead of saying, like, I just think we put too much value in these people as if they're not just people, right? That's one. That's one thing. Okay. The second thing, the lady, the lady that just called, or whatever, she was talking about reparations. Or, you know, maybe she made she made a comment about, about reparations. I wish, like us as like African Americans, we would kind of get that out. Not African Americans, but whatever. Say, I wish we would kind of get the whole idea of reparations out of our head. What is reparations going to truly do? Right? If your mindset, if, uh, let me let me start this way. If you give somebody that doesn't know how to manage money, and they don't have much money. You get them a ton of money. What are they gonna do? Mismanage, mis- mis- mismanage you know, money do you, at a greater scale. Do you mismanage money? Right? Do, and do you mismanage money? Go ahead. Do you mismanage money? Do I mismanage me, me personally? Mm-hmm. I'm at the, I'm 25, so like I probably went through my little phase where I feel like I just was, you know, thinking that oh I'm young, let me just you know live and be young. Maybe t- just last year when I turned 24, my mind kind of my mindset kind of changed a little bit. Not only because 
you know, I needed to. Obviously, I'm trying to grow up and, you know, be a young man and be a husband one day. But I had to come to realization that you're not going to be young. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Hold on a second, hold on. You said you want to be a husband. Do you want to be a father? Yes, I do want to be a father, yes, ma'am. Okay, it takes about... Before 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 your kid gets to college age, it takes about $250,000. Do you have that now? Do I have what? $250,000. That's per kid. That's how much it takes. No, Pre-college, do no, you have no. it? So how are you no, going to raise that baby? How am I taking care of the baby? Yeah, it takes $250,000 per kid. This is, doesn't this doesn't include college. So even if they never go to college, it's right. $250,000 per kid. Where's that money coming from? Right. Well, I mean, I think we're skipping steps here. You know what I'm saying? So I said I want to be a husband first. I didn't say anything about being a, about being a father. I I, no, that's why I asked. That's why I asked. That's why I asked you. Because I know you didn't say that, so that's why I asked you. Well, I understand, I understand, but I, the reason why I say that is because everything has a sequence of events. You understand? I can't be a man. I can't be the man that I, I want to be. I can't be a husband if I can't provide for myself. All I got right now, all my, all my, my, my uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My, um, my responsibilities. I have a dog. I got myself, and I got my rent, and I got my car, a car note. Those are the four things that I that I take care of currently, and I handle. But. I got to, I had to, I had to get to a point to where I can handle all my bases before I can even think about bringing something else on. And I think as, as black people, we don't even think like that. We want to think about what can I, what can help you right now, or what's best fitting right now. So, 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 okay, you, you have the basics. You want a spouse. Um, um, you Damn, don't. I'm sorry, I knew you didn't well, think. well, here, here's my thing. Um, America is a very costly place, and so if I, I'm not, I'm not trying to get reparations out of your mind. I think reparations is in your bank account or the lack thereof. You have a dog in an apartment. You don't have a home, right? You you don't have. And it, and when we talk about money management, like let me just explain something to everybody who's watching. Wealthy people don't just come out of the womb able to manage money. Like the best way to be able to manage money is to have some man- money to handle. They they go. There are wealth managers for a reason. And when you get reparations, the first thing you should do, I can't force you to do it, but you should go and find a good money manager. Not none of these schemers that, that you know, JT, uh, Pocket Watching with JT talks a lot about these little schemers and scammers. Right. I'm not talking about them. I'm right. saying that money management isn't as hard as people make it out to be. We don't manage money because we ain't got none. Like, managing your checking account is not managing money. The thing that you have to do is have is people don't come out when people when people and when you have money when you live a life like reparations comes down tomorrow you know what happens you you start managing money and then you can tell your kid this is how I managed the money so far and this is what I did and this is the part that you're inheriting now the problem that I have with you I I don't know why anybody would turn down wealth like what part of you feels like you should reject wealth that your your people earned. Like, what part of you feels like okay, that's necessary give, for manhood? Can I give you a retort to that, or can I give you a sure, go ahead. to that a little bit, please? All right, so my whole initial thing about the reparations is that reparations, in the way that we go about, act, you know, wanting or, or, or asking about reparations, we go about it in the way of, oh, we, 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 we're owed that, oh, we deserve that. First of all, first of all, first, you said something very, very important. You don't come into the world understanding how to deal with money. You got to get the money, learn how to deal with it, and you it's, it's, it's part, everything is part of learning. But see, that's my issue with black people. We're not trying to learn and educate ourselves so that we can become financially fluent. You know what I'm saying? Instead, we want to be given, like you said, wealth. Who wants to turn it's down wealth? It's not a gift. Nobody turned down wealth. Nobody turned down any money. You are. But, in context of did I deserve, what did I do to earn that money? Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Stay right there, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. A white man, a white man. His his grandfather leaves a him man. a grandfather, his white man, his his grandfather leaves him a million dollars, right? In an account. Right. What did he do to earn that money? He he himself did nothing to earn that money. He did nothing. Okay, so you didn't do so you didn't do anything. To, now you live the consequence, but you didn't do anything to earn that money either. Let's say you we live the consequence of race, but you that let's say you didn't. Kid, hold on, 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 hold on one second, one second. That same kid, that same white kid who got a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, um, a million dollars inheritance, or whatever, from his grandfather, he didn't ask for that money. His grandfather said, "I'm passing it down in our lineage." No, that's, that's not. But no, 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 no. Wait, no. Name. You can't move the goalpost on me though. You said you don't get it because you didn't earn it. What I'm telling, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that inheritance is not earned by you. 
Inheritance is always earned by your father, your grandmother, your grandfather. It's never earned by you. So take that earning part out of the conversation because any inheritance that you have is not earned by you in this lifetime. White people are about to have the greatest inheritance of wealth in the history of this country. They are about to inherit, inherit a bunch of money that they did not earn. So take earning out of it. You are about you are inheriting something negative over there with a dog and an apartment. What I'm telling you is that inheritance is not and has never been about earning. And we inherit stuff. So if we don't want nobody to inherit nothing, let's just stop all inheritance. Let's just stop it all right there. First of all, first of all, first of all, first of all. We're asking for a handout. That's the issue. That it's not a handout. It's not a handout. Listen, listen. You need to. If you have, do you have some? Do you have some books in that house? Like, let me just say something. Everybody is inheriting. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, wait a minute. You're not gonna tell me to hold. No, wait, no, wait. No, no. Hold on, hold on. No, you don't know how to have a. You don't know how to have a conversation. This is my conversation. I run this conversation. Now we can have the conversation, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not gonna do it. And that's not. You're not gonna get a wife with that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not gonna happen either. Like, you got to learn how to have a conversation. I talk, you talk, I talk, you talk. If it's my show, I run the conversation. I, I direct the conversation. So what I'm telling you is that reparations is not a handout. We had a bunch of labor that we... What, what we I, you got to let me finish. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to teach you. What we had a bunch of labor that we our people didn't get paid for. So the 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 labor that's when white people talk about getting inheritance, they're getting inheritance from labor and that their people were paid for. We were not paid for. Then it you you gotta thing. you gotta let me finish. You can't have this much ADHD. Get a pencil and a paper if you don't have. You can't remember long enough. To let me finish for twenty seconds. You gotta. Man, what is wrong with you? My okay? I'm, a, I'm, disrespe I'm disrespecting your ability. You don't know me from a can of paint. Yes. Have a simple uh, listen, you don't know how to. You don't but know how you to talk. You have don't a temper. Don't demean me with words now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what you are, young man. You don't demean me. You 25 years old and you don't man. know nothing. How can you tell me what I am and you don't know me from a can of paint? Get get off my phone. You are a child. Let me tell you first of all what you are. I mean, I, I, let me tell you this. This you're a fool. Like, let me tell you, you people are fools because you do not listen. You cannot be a 25 year old and talk to me like you crazy. I have thrown him off the phone. Listen, if I am almost 50, I'm disrespecting you. You disrespected yourself. You disrespect yourself when you call up here. You have not read a book. You can. You don't know anything about redlining. You don't know anything about Jim Crow. You don't know anything about slavery. You don't know anything about slavery built America. You got an apartment and a cat and probably $20. You've told me everything I need to know about you in terms of what you do not know. Now, you do not get to tell me, listen, some of you young people, y'all are way too emotional, too. Like, the way y'all go from zero to 100 is like that little Drake song. I go zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> What's that little song? Like, you should not get that upset. Like, I am not a person on this on this 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 show. Like, I don't cut people off. Like, the first caller, we disagree. Was it this first caller, the second caller? We disagree. And that's fine. This is a space to disagree. But you don't get to over-talk somebody on their own show. Like, that's not what they do. And if you don't know how not to overtalk people, that also becomes a problem. You have to learn how to have a conversation. You don't know how to have a conversation. You don't even know what your own needs are. You're not going to survive. You're not going to survive with, with, like, an apartment, right? And, and your dog, you don't have the money. You don't have... Well, he doesn't know, and I don't know who he is, but he doesn't, he doesn't, I don't know whether, he sounds like a New York or something, but you don't have the money for a family. And he was like, well, you jumped the gun. You're talking about my family. I asked you if you wanted a family. So then when you didn't like my answer about you're not going to be able to afford a family, you told me I jumped the gun. No, I asked you the question because I'm setting up the stage for you're not going to be able to afford a family. Sir, I can tell by the conversation I'm having with you, you're never going to have half a million dollars if reparation doesn't come. <laughs> but it's just, it's just not going to happen right like where are you going to get it from like where is that going to happen and so let me just say this before we before we because I think I think some moments are really really teachable moments right I think so how y'all fill up the queue again like how <laughs> 
<laughs> they done made y'all mad. Like, how y'all feel good? But, like, I think some moments are really, are really, like, teachable moments, right? I really do. And I'm not saying that to, to, be, to, to be mean or to demean anybody. I just really believe that. And I think, like, stop doing that thing. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not attractive to anybody. I'm not talking about in a, in a, in a sexual way or a physical way. I'm talking about just in terms of having a conversation. Like 25 is time to outgrow the way you, 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 you have conversations with people. <laughs> so Claudia said, don't put this on New Yorkers. I ain't trying to put that on you, Claudia. I don't know what that was. But it's just, it, you can't, you have to, I'm going to hang up on you. And some of you all believe that you can't be hung up on. Like, I mean, she ain't going to hang up on me. Who are you? Like, I'm trying to have a conversation. You have to let me finish. If you watch this show enough, you know that I'm going to let you finish. And he came here with an apartment and a dog trying to impart information on me about wealth. What I will tell you is that no other group, I hate when people say that, No, other, nobody but black people, nobody, I will say that nobody but ADOS turns down money, right? Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody but us. We have people who are lobbying right now and get money for big ag, they get money for growing corn, they get money for uh, K Street, it's filled with lobbyists to help people get money from the government. People go to the government because of what the money is. Only somebody with a dog and 25 cents will call up here and say, no, <laughs> not me. Right. I don't need it. You can give it away. Right. I don't need it. And just be loud and wrong. Y'all are going to have to just learn to read and sit with the information that is before you. Right. And understand you don't know. And I sympathize with you because we all thought we knew more than what we knew at 25. Like I thought I knew more than what I knew at 25. So I sympathize with people who don't know things that they think they knew. If I went back to 25, I would change a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I thought, a lot of stuff that I did, because I was just wrong. And so, like, this idea, though, that you have that you know stuff, and my daddy told me, no disrespect to your daddy, but you, you learn at a certain point that your parents don't know it all either, and you haven't gotten there. And it's just like, listen, I'm not going to, listen, I'm 48. I'm not finna, I'll be 49 next month. I'm not finna be disrespected by you, child. I'm not, I'm just not, it's just not, it's just not in me. You're going to have to, you're going to have to go somewhere and sit down. It's just not going, you not, uh-uh, not at this age. That's one thing about getting a little bit older. You, I'm not, you're not finna stand to me. You're not finna cut me off. You can say that for your gal friend, a boyfriend, whichever. I don't care. Um, but anyway, fam, <laughs> we just, we just, I'm a fam. That's going to be it. I know all y'all came back in. I know you came back in. I hate Oh, let me see if I can get another call. Cause that's just the worst call to end on, ain't it? Just butter, 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 butter. We don't need the butter, 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 butter. Um, let me see. Let me go to let me go to nine one three real quick. Let me do you know what they call a palette changer. Um, nine one three. What's going on? Let me get you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you got to follow it up, man. I got to everything. I'm, I'm like, dang, buddy just went off. He was going crazy. It wasn't even the topic of the call. Like, first of all, stay on topic. We weren't even talking about that. <laughs> he thought he was going to teach me something. Let me tell you about the young people. Woo. Go on, fam. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wrong young person. I love young people. Y'all said the wrong one today. Go ahead, fam. I'm sorry. No, nah, but, um, yeah, yeah. To go to back to the to the main conversation with Monique, uh, one thing that I did not like, or that that everybody does, they always talk about the community. They pathologize us every time they get on TV. They talk mm -hmm. about what we do. Mm -hmm. When I don't know who these we are, because I don't do that, you don't do that. Mm. We hate on each other. We do this. We do that. We don't do that, and it's usually some famous person mm -hmm. because somebody don't agree with something about something what they did so then they put that on all of us and when monique got up there she didn't say nothing about how you supported her she didn't talk about the people who supported her mm -hmm. she pathologized she pathologized all of us and didn't say who supported her that was her moment to to shout those out who did support her that weren't famous so to the to the one guy who was saying um She's going to get up there and take her moment, and then she's just going to run off and do whatever. I can see where he's coming from with that because I sat there and watched you support her. I yeah, and, and the thing is, but let me just her. say this, too. Let me just say this, too. Monique frequently retweets stuff I do or whatever, and, like, she's... It's not like she... It's not like I was ghosted. I'm just saying in DMs. Like, it's not like I was a ghost. That's all I say. It's not like I was ghosted or anything like that. Um, but let me just say... Yeah, but that was her moment. You just seen him coming off of Cat Williams. You got the spotlight on you. And when and when nobody was listening to you and everybody was calling you bitter, 
We we supported you. So you doing a little retweet, that's cool, you know, whatever. I guess we can take what we can take. That's fine. But I think this, the main thing for the whole conversation about everything with the quote-unquote community or ADOS or black folk or whatever the case you want to call us is we got to have higher standards. I agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I agree with Our that standards wholeheartedly. Are, standards and, are too low. We're yeah. willing to accept too too little. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that's you. Let me let me let me get that out the way. I'm not. Oh no no. You. I don't I don't interpret it that way. I don't. I didn't take it. I didn't take it that way. Okay, I'm just making sure, but I, I just, I just don't, I don't appreciate that. Well, and you know, and you know, let me, let me say this too. I think, I think what's about to happen though, in terms of us, um, in terms of ADOS, and I, and I, you know, is that we're about to become so big, it's going to be very hard to like, um, ignore. But I think, and I think, you know, part of the reason I give grace in, in situations like that because I know how hard it is too to, to kind of have that kind of interview. Um, and because I thought of some other stuff that was missed in both Cat Williams and her interview. I, I always see stuff that is missed um, in those kinds of interviews that, sh that should be said and, and is missed because you're there and you're having a back and forth um, with this person or whatever the case may be. So I always, I always kind of, I always kind of see that, you know what I mean? But, you know, and, and I, and I, you know, I give, I give grace to people, individuals anyway, because I kind of know what I went through in terms of, you know, MSNBC and all the smears and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, if, if, if I had the chance to come back out, you know, I understand what people are saying, she, cat, they're going to go get their money. And I kind of understand that. You know, I don't look to celebrities for that kind of thing, but I understand that if I've been blackballed, I'm going to make a beeline to the money. <laughs> because, because I have responsibilities, I have things like that. Now, I think the community as a whole, and I'm not talking about ADOS, I know ADOS supports us, but I'm talking about the community as a whole, like, just really doesn't have a political culture to care enough about politics. Um, and things of that nature. But, you know, for me, it's just I, I interpret things different, only a little bit different because I've been in, like, the eye of the eye of the, the monster. And I kind of know what that looks like and what that feels like because you're kind of there by yourself, right? Now, I mean, she has a partner or whatever, but you're kind of just there kind of alone, kind of just fighting. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and um, to, to, to say what you were saying about uh, hard work and, you know, all that just being an ingredient. My grandmother always says slaves work hard. Mm -hmm. Everybody work hard. Mm -hmm. And if you're black, you you work hard. You being a black person, you already got three jobs. Number one, staying alive. Mm. Mm -hmm. First and mm -hmm. foremost. Mm. Woo! You gotta say the word. You gotta be an actor, because then you gotta be able to work. Yeah, you gotta so be able to act like show, America and America. So you an actor, you a survivor. Win an Oscar every day. <laughs> every day. Every day, every day, I gotta, <laughs> you smiling, you laughing, oh, that dude was funny. How you doing? You hey, Chad, I saw you, I saw you. Did you see the game last night, Chad? Hey, Cynthia. <laughs> How you doing? No, Did you no, make the guacamole for the potluck? I'm <laughs> sorry, uh, About uh, Joe Button, I had a couple of run-ins with him. Oh, did you? Uh, it's on camera. I got flipped the whole little thing. What happened? Uh, what happened with him? What you did? You tried to get a picture? What's what you did? <laughs> no, 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 no. We we had a little bet back in the day. Okay, okay, that sounds fair. And he lived up to his end of the bargain. Oh. And then back then, and back then he was he wasn't nobody. Like you know, he was a fellow rapper. You know, he had his little hit, but he was trying to get back on, so he used that girl with the gigantic posterior I'll say I'll be respectful because you know I don't know if this kid's watching anything and that's how he got back to to where he was mm. he had a black manager back then it's so many girls with big booties I don't even know like <laughs> I don't even know which one people be talking about it's so many people I'm such I don't even know like go on I'm sorry <laughs> that, that's the one that put him on the map that's why we care about him again mm, okay First and foremost, we don't care about why do you care about his podcast? Somebody cares about that. What is his opinion? This dude, like Tony said in his last show, we're talking about a high school dropout, two of them, and somebody who can't read well. And these are the people we watch. And we talk about Joe Button. He, you know, he he's a, a former drug addict or a drug addict as far but as. But he's I know, entertaining. I like I don't take anything. See this thing. I don't take anything away from Joe Button because he is entertaining. 
He's like he's a he's a great conversationalist, I think. So I don't take I don't take no I'm, I, I I think he's wrong, right, in terms of what he said. But I don't take anything away from like his podcast. I don't think he's right about what he said. But I don't take nothing away from him. I think it's a I think it's a fun podcast. It's a lot it's a lot more fun than I go all around on YouTube. It's a lot it's a, it's, a, it's ten times better than everything I hear, right? They just because he's a he's a he can he can keep a conversation going. So I don't take anything away from him. You know I don't want to be that person. I don't, I'm not like that. But you know. Listen, you you don't have to be out. Be Howard Stern is entertaining, but I'm not listening to that. I, you know, there's a, two dogs fighting in the street can be entertaining to to whomever. You know, but that's not that's not my taste. You know, I don't. That's not for me. You know, and I just know he just keeps showing himself the type of character that he has, and he's constantly wrong. And when he can let that white manager go up there and say what he said, it just reminds me. Of, I'll end with this. Remember what Alexander said. A long time ago, don't trust no black person until you see him around white people. Mm. Mm. I never mm-hmm. forget that. I he never was right. forget that he said that. That was a gem. Alexander got a lot it of gems. Was. That was one that of them. Was, <laughs> that, was a, that, was, that was some wisdom right there. Mm. But anyway... Thanks for everything. And, no, I you appreciate know, you, fam. Thanks for, thanks for cleaning everything yeah. up. After, after that last call, we had to clean it up, but I appreciate you. <laughs> You have a good one. You have a good one. Yeah, listen, I don't want. I I appreciate what I appreciate his perspective. I don't want to take anything away from anybody though. You know, like I said, like you know, if you can climb yourself, if you can climb yourself out of that one history, one hit one of them, and have a have a pod and and do the thing. Kudos to you. I salute it. But you just wrong on this in terms of me. Like you, you know, we we got mentioned on the Joe Button pod for those who don't know. Like I don't. So I'm not. I'm not saying that. Like you know. But it was. It was flip. <laughs> Shout out. To, what what was the salute? <laughs> but it was. You know. So it. But I. So I don't take anything away from anything. But it's just like I don't understand. Like this is a problem. But Lord have mercy. I don't even know. I don't even know. Alexander was on the show not too too long ago. Um. Um, I can't remember which one it was, um, but yeah, fam, yeah. Let me let me get on out of here. We we in here. We in here later than usual. We don't wait. What is this? Two hours and twenty minutes. Um, but I appreciate you, fam. It's been a wild, wild time. We were doing good. The brother came in here, started talking about we don't need no reverse. The problem is we want a handout. Child, you had the wrong. You need to call in. Does Candace Owens have a call in <laughs> for you to call in and tell her that this is what this is and we don't need nothing anyway, fam? I wanna I wanna um, I wanna thank y'all um, for being here. Had a great, 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 great time as usual. Um, and listen, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to besmirch nobody. Or, y'all know, I'm just, I don't, I don't really carry a whole lot of hate in my heart. A little bit of bitterness, but, <laughs> but that's not what it is. It's just like we have to get to a place that's going to lead us to be able to do um, the kind of work that we need to do. And I feel like too, too often you know, podcasters and and celebrities and all these other people who are offering opinions get in the way of doing that, usually because they don't have the particular kind of knowledge or because they do business in a certain kind of way. And I feel like we have to get to the crux of that and we have to deal with that. And there's no there's no way around it. So I appreciate it. I appreciate all the people who are able to who are able to be ADOS podcasters or whatever or, or, or and and able to reach us without going through a filter i appreciate that um but i i appreciate also my ability and willingness to hold you accountable to that and to what your responsibility is right you have to you have to be thoughtful and that's just it just is what it is and i appreciate everybody thank you everybody have a good night um and i will see everybody um well no i'll see i'll see people in patron uh, uh, on Patreon, Patron, <laughs> tomorrow, what is it? From, um, and it's, it's patreon.com slash Um, uh, what happened? Leave me alone. What happened? What I did? <laughs> I'll see, uh, but I'll see, the, I'll see the, if, if you want to sign up. That's, I do Patreon Mondays and Thursdays and I do YouTube on Wednesdays. So can't even remember my own schedule. Um, and join, hey, please join ADOS.com if you want to know what we're about, ADOSfoundation.org. Um, and that's where we at, fam. I'll see y'all later.